What's going on fellow web developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in today's video we're going to be building a fully responsive real-time newsfeed web application. You'll build a home page with a newsfeed that updates in real time when changes are made. A singular news page to display the full content, an authors page that will show all the current authors and finally an author details page that has all the authors posts. In this video you're going to learn how to use the Vue CLI to scaffold a Vue.js application. We'll learn how to use Vue Freeze Composition API along with Vuex for handling the state of our application. We'll be using Tailwind CSS to style the front-end user interface of our web application and lastly we'll be learning how you can manage your content with Sanity. Sanity is a content management system or CMS you can use whenever you need content for your app and or website. It allows you to create structured content which is great for making your content more resilient and easier to adapt for your needs. Sanity has one of the best API experiences in the industry that allows you to start simple but grow it to be more advanced depending on your needs. The team at Sanity have spent a lot of time building a fully real-time collaborative editing environment that you can get up and running quickly. They are truly invested in the developer experience and have full-time employees present in their Slack community to answer your questions. Getting started is easy. Sanity have even hooked us up with a free boosted plan for all of you. You can find this free boosted plan by heading over to sanity.io forward slash Tyler Potts. The link will be in the description and you can follow the tutorial which is on that page. We'll also go over this in this video. Okay guys, so I have just opened up Visual Studio Code in a blank directory and this is where we're going to start creating our view and also our Sanity Studio in here. So I've got a browser page open, you can see here, this is using the cli.fuejs.org guide installation.html. I will put this link in the description of the video. Um, and if you come to here, you can see how you can install it. Um, just so you know, you need, obviously, you need to have Node.js installed. It says it right here, at least version 8.9 or above. Uh, version 10 plus is recommended though. Um, and you can check your node version by going node hyphen v and you can see I'm using currently version 15.14 um, And that's what I'm currently using. So once you want to install uh, npm you can either you also install few CLI You can even install it via the uh, npm or yarn. It doesn't really matter which one whichever one you prefer um, You can hit enter and now that's going to install a uh, few globally for you If you get any issues or any errors, please feel free to hop in my discord Give me a shout out say hey Tyler I got stuck on your tutorial at this part and I will try my best to help you with any errors that pop up I'll see you basically, I'll see you once this is done. Okay guys, you can see that's done and installed on my machine. Now we can run view, create, and we can give our project a name. Now for this, I'm actually gonna do dot, and what dot does is mean create the project in the current directory with the name of the directory, which is YouTube, which is fine. You could also call it something else like so like uh, test project, but that's actually gonna create a folder called test and pull it inside of it. So I just wanna say, dot to create in the current folder. So if I hit enter, that's then gonna ask me a few questions. You can see it's asked me to generate the project in the current directory. I'm just gonna hit enter for yes. And now it's gonna ask me to pick some presets. So I'm gonna manually select my feature so I can show you what we're having. So I'm gonna install router. So use spacebar to select what's going on in here. And then I'm gonna use few X. Now you can add some more if you want to, if you're planning to make this a much bigger app than I have, you can add in CSS preprocessors, uh, progressive web apps, or even TypeScript. Again, this is built with Tailwind, so I don't need it. CSS preprocess or anything like that, but you can add any of these features if you want. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to ask us which version of few do we want to use. Now I'm going to select version three because I'd rather use the latest version. Um, and then it's going to ask us, do we want to use history mode for router? I'm just going to hit enter for yes. And I'm actually going to enter through almost everything here. Um, and there you go. Now that's going to actually create our project um, inside of this folder. And then once that's done, we'll get up with setting up sanity. Okay, now that's done, you can see down here it has npm run surf, but we're not going to obviously do anything with that just yet. Okay guys, so the next place we're going to go to is getting started with the Sanity CLI. You can see over here we have the Sanity docs. Again, I'll put this link in the description. If I do forget though, please do remind me and I'll pull it in there as soon as possible. Um, as you can see here, getting started with Sanity CLI here. 
um, and it shows you how you actually install it, how you get started with a new project, um, and also you log in. So if we go to npm install hyphen g at sanity CLI, we can copy this, go back to our terminal and hit run on this as well, and I'll see you once that has finished. Okay, that finished in two seconds, which is absolutely insanely fast because I already have had installed this and it must already be at the latest version. So if I type sanity version, you can see I get version 2.27.0. So if you, if you haven't already, you'll need to go sanity login and follow in these steps. I've already done that. So I think this is just going to, it's going to ask me what I want to sign in with. I can say Google. It's going to take me through here. I can click on my account. It says login successful. So I've already logged in before, but you may need to create an account. I've gone through Google, so I don't actually need to create an, any account or anything like that. And you can see it says login successful there. Now, once you've done that, you can actually get started with um, creating a sanity project. So we say sanity in it. So we're going to hit sanity in it and that's going to ask us to create a new project or use an existing one. So there's one of the existing ones I already have. Obviously, we're going to create a new project now. It's going to ask us for a name. So I'm going to say the YouTube news feed um, and hit enter. And that's now going to create our project. It's going to say use the default data set configuration of production. I'm going to hit yes. And that's going to create our data set. Now, once that's done, it's going to put the output part the out project output path. So it's gonna say, where do you want this to go? So as you can see, it's currently set to there, but I would actually prefer it to go into studio. I'm just gonna do a dot slash so it does it from where we currently are. If I hit enter, now it's gonna ask us what schemas we wanna do. So if you select the project template, you can actually get a schema based on this. So this will be the data um, you can enter and it'll be based on this. So the blog will have such stuff like posts, categories um, and author, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but it gives you a template to do, to get set with. But I'm gonna start a clean project with no defined schema, so I can actually show you how you can create your own and get set up with all your own schemas. So let's hit enter on that, and that's gonna actually create our studio project. You can see here it says studio here, which has just been created. And you can see there's schemas in here, which actually empty, it just has this single schema, and this is where we can actually add our schemas in. So I'll show you more on that later. Okay, and after about almost about eight and 10 minutes, it's now done. So you can see it just take a little while, but it gets everything set up ready for you. So you can see there's a bunch of different things here you can actually do. Um, and yeah, there's a lot here. So you can see, you can see Santi start to actually run your studio. You can act, explore the CLI manual. You can set a Santi manage. Now what Santi manage does is it will open the project in the settings browser. So the actual Santi cloud, um, but not the actual studio. Uh, and then you can open the documentation in your browser by typing sanity docs. So just to see if this is working, we're going to type sanity start and actually have it open. So you can see it says command start is not available outside of sanity project or context. That's because we're not actually currently in the directory. So I actually need to cd into studio here and then type sanity start again. And now this should actually work this time. Okay guys, so I just want to show you another error I've just got, which is unknown browser query dead. Now this is actually, shouldn't actually be an error. This is actually just a mini mistake. Now the issue with this is it's actually getting few JS's because I've built this project inside of few JS. It's actually copying the browser list source here. So what we're going to do for this, we're going to close, we're actually just going to delete this from here. And then we're gonna try and rerun Sanity again. So let's type Sanity and hit start. Now guys, you can see it says it's complete, it's successfully compiled and we can go to localhost free, 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 free. So if I click that, it's gonna ask us to sign in. So, cause obviously we signed in with the account earlier when we actually set up Sanity. Now to do this, I'm just gonna hit Google cause obviously I signed in with Google. And now that should connect us and actually put us through to our thing. Now you can see here, this is what we're, uh, faced with now it's not much because the reason is we don't have any schemas and document types now to we need to go and add those i'm going to show you that slightly later in the video um but i want to show you this all working there's actually something we need to do beforehand and we actually need to go to manage project okay guys so as you can see here we now have the boosted free plan i swapped it up and you can see now we have double the requests we have a million requests 200k api requests which is also double double the bandwidth double the documents the same data set the same admin and the same listeners um but also five gigs of assets as well so you can see here you get a massive boost which almost double on a bunch of important areas here 
So that's what we currently get. Now, now if we click on API, one of the things we're going to need to do is actually allow course origins because obviously currently it's only allowing localhost 333, which is this origin here. But we're going to want to also add in our client, which is going to be on few and few by default will be on HTTP localhost 8080. Now we could just hit save and that's going to add it in here. And this will allow it to actually connect to the uh, project API as it says there. You can also go into settings here and change the name if you wanted to. Um, and you can basically do whatever you want here. Then you can delete it as well. And that's that. So yeah, you can go down here, archive it if you wanted to. So you can remove it, but not permanently delete it. Um, and it could be reactivated or you could just delete it completely if you wanted to get rid of it and you were done with it. Or you could even transfer ownership. Um, again, I haven't tried that, but that's something you could do. So here you go, guys. This is that. That's all you need to know. And one of the main things you want to look at is your project ID because you'll be using this later on. So now we've created our few application and we've also set up sanity and the core settings. One of the next things we want to do is actually set up sanity to work with few. We want to connect both few and sanity. Now, as you can see, this is essentially what we need. So we're going to need to install sanity client. And the last one was actually the CLI. So this time we're going to install the client, but actually um, in the application. So here I'm going to create a new shell and I'm going to clear this. And inside of the YouTube folders, inside this directory, we're just going to paste npm install sanity client. I've also noticed this is installing it globally, but in theory, we actually need this to be installed locally. So we actually have it access on the application. So let's just hit enter and that should hopefully install the application. So you can actually see in the package.json file, we have the sanity client here at 3.1.0, which is perfect. That's exactly what we need. So once we've got that, we're gonna to wanna to create a new file inside of our source here. We're gonna to wanna to create it and call it client.js. And this is where our sanity client is gonna live. So inside of here, if we go back here, we can see this here. So we actually just wanna copy this bring that into here and hit paste. Now there's a few things we're gonna need. Now this token we don't actually need because we're not gonna be posting to our database from, or our, sorry, our Sanity CMS um, from the front end. So we can actually remove that. Um, we can obviously false if you want to ensure fresh data, which we don't necessarily need there. So we'll just leave it like that for now. Uh, API version, I'm just gonna leave it as it currently is. Uh, the data set which is just going to be production and then we also need to get our project id so if we go back to our app and back into our manage you can actually copy the project id from here and then inside of our project we can actually just paste our new project id in there and there you go that's now set there we then want to say export default and we just want to export our client and that way we now have access to our current client, which will be access to our project connected by the project ID. So just to explain what this is doing, basically anytime we now import our client into any of our, um, let's say inside of app.view, if we wanted to use it in here, we'll now be able to access the client and our application from there, which we'll is import and be able to call it. Okay guys, and now we've done that, we wanna go back here and we're gonna to go to the Tailwind CSS docs guides. I'm using Fiber. this is it's practically gonna be the same thing. So in here, we're actually gonna install Tailwinds now to obviously get Tailwind set up. So we'll install npm install hyphen D Tailwind CSS. I'll leave this link in the description as well, um, just so it's there. So let's just hit paste, hit enter, and that's gonna basically set up these and give us a Tailwind config. And then once it's done that, we actually want to copy this and actually paste this into our Tailwind config. So now inside Tailwind config, we could just replace these, hit paste, and that's fine. That's now in there, ready to go. Let's close that. And then we want to go into our source, create a new folder, and I'm going to call this CSS. And in there, I'm going to have a main.css in there. Then we're going to want to copy these um, tags right here, copy them, go back, and paste them in here to actually allow Tailwind to use them. And finally, inside of app. Dot, no, sorry, inside of main.js, we actually want to import the CSS. So we're going to say import, and we're just going to say forward slash CSS forward slash main dot CSS. And now we should be able to use Tailwind from in there. So let's start our app. So along is our 
the content studio is running that's good we can now start our um our few applications we're going to run npm run and surf and that's actually going to start our development server for few js now that's running we can actually just alt and click this to open it up in here and here you go you can see the router is working and that's all there and you can actually tell that um although you don't know you can actually tell that tailwind is working because of all these resets like the image hitting the side and all of this so let's go back into here and just to double check it's working inside of app I'm just going to get on that, on that thing and I'm going to say class and I'm going to say background, uh, let's say green, just something obvious, 500, hit save, go back and there you go. You can see it's actually worked and Tailwind is working. So let's undo that for now and that is now set up. So Okay, so next up, let's create the header and sidebar components so we can actually have a menu that pulls out to help us swap between the two views we're going to have. So we're going to have the um, home view and also the office view. Obviously, we're not going to set up the home and office pages yet, but we'll actually get the menu opening now so we can actually see what it looks like and get obviously all the functionality in there. So first off, we're just going to delete everything in style. We're going to remove this nav bar at the top let's just shrink that and bring that back out um just like that so it looks a bit better then in our components we're going to delete the hello world component and inside of our home view we're going to delete basically all of this for now including this um we're going to bring this up and finally i'm just going to give a h1 which just says home inside of here and that way we can obviously see that this page is home and in here we can just save this now if we go back to our page here you can see that says home and just for testing purposes we can go to slash about and this says this is an about page there you go although we will delete the about page eventually so now you can see that's done obviously we have our still an empty schema we'll come back to this later and let's just add some google icons to our actual website now so i'm going to click on the git repository here and that's going to open up in here now we just need to find this url link right here i'm going to copy this go back to our code and we're going to go in public index.html and paste this underneath just like that i'm going to bring it onto one line so it's a bit neater and there you go we're just going to be using material icons for the um, menu button and i'll show you more about that in a moment so let's create two new components let's create the first component header uh header nav dot view hit enter and i can just say in here template with html and in here we've just put a header with the class of flex whip full uh, items center we can then have a justify center and a padding of four hit enter and there you go now we need to go into our store and actually add in some state elements real quick so the first ones we're going to need so in here i'm going to delete modules because we do not need modules i'm also going to bring this back and turn this into uh, my tabs because that's what i'm currently using and inside of state i want to ask for menu is active and i'm going to set that equal to false by default because obviously we do not want it to be active but we're going to basically toggle this to be true and false anytime we click the menu to say open or closed we're then going to have a post which is going to be an empty array where we store our post from sanity we're then going to have authors which is also going to be an empty array where we store um, our authors in basically and then finally we're going to have a total oh, sorry a total posts um number which is going to be set to zero now that we're going to basically query the sanity um well we're going to query sanity and say hey how many posts do we currently have in total and then it's going to tell us that because obviously we're only going to be storing the posts we want because we're going to have pagination so we need to obviously ask how many posts do we actually have all together so we know when to show the load more button and i'll explain more of that once we get to it but for now the main one we're looking at is this menu is active now we're going to have a couple of functions in it because we need to be able to change this into a into true or false we need to be able to toggle it so we need an action now the action is going to be called toggle menu just like this oh and i'm basically going to get out the commit method inside of our inside of our toggle menu here so in here literally we just want to do this commit toggle menu now the reason we don't we don't just call commit straight away is because normally you use an action to 
get the get the command from somewhere else and then pass a mutation via the actions um, so in here we're going to say toggle underscore menu and this is obviously going to have a state and we're also going to pass something called dir which means direction and we're going to set the dir equal to null but later on I'll explain what the dir will actually do so we can say if dir well direction is equal to and I'm going to say open so if we're saying open we're going to say the state dot menu needs to be true else if dir is equal to close then our state menu is a, is going to be uh, basically it's going to be false otherwise then we're just going to toggle the state so here you can see state dot menu is active it's going to be equal to whatever it's not so if it's false it's going to turn to true if it's true it's going to turn to false and so on so that's what we're doing here and that's the logic behind to this now that's all we need for this uh store right now so let's just close it for now and go back into our header in our header we just want to create our hamburger here so let's just say um we're going to create a diff and we're going to basically add a class on here but i'm going to break it down so i'm going to bind this class using the bind syntax in few um and inside of here i'm just going to say oh we're going to pass back some um back ticks which allow us to use template literal so we're just going to say menu toggle for the first uh class name because we're going to need to target that then we're going to use some uh tailwind class so we're going to say relative and c index 50 because we want this to be on top of everything we want it to sit there so we can actually see it we're then going to pass in this and this let's just hide that side by and zoom in one as well as you can read that a bit better so now inside of here i'm going to break this down and i'm going to say is menu or menu is active i think we called it and now in here we can say if menu is active we're going to say is active otherwise we're going to pass through nothing so let me explain this so what we're doing is we're passing through a template literal and then we're using a ternary operator to check if this is true so if this is true then this stands for what's uh, what is in in this so if this is true then we're going to call this and then this stands for else so if this is not true then we're going to call the empty string here um so if you don't understand this and look up uh ternary operators and that should give you a bit of an explanation but you can see here we'll call it menu is active but we don't know what this is so we need to create a script tag um and inside of here we are going to basically say that we do need that but we're going to use the setup directive here and above here i'm just going to import computed from view and we're also going to import use store from view x so in here we can say const store is equal to use store and then we can then just say um menu well there you go you can see it there that's actually a shorthand i was going to do it the long way by creating a variable and then passing it through but this works just as well so we'll just say computed is equal to the store state menu is active there which is perfect so that should be false um and in here we're just going to say dot hamburger and then we're going to have a span inside of here so this is where it's going to live we also want to add a click event onto our um top level diff here and you know i'm gonna leave that there but on the click we're just gonna say dollar store dot dispatch or you know what let's call toggle menu as an actual function let's create a toggle men menu function i'm gonna say if const toggle menu is equal to store dot commit no we're gonna actually dispatch and we're basically just gonna dispatch the same name here toggle menu um and we're going to pass this in here just like that so we've got our function and obviously our compute property here which we're basically going to pass back um so that's just going to call toggle and this should change so let's go have a look what happens here so back in here we're going to open up our terminal on the right in the elements and i'm just going to highlight over here oh i just thought we can't actually we haven't got that currently because we need to actually update it um, anyway let's go back to our 
element here and we need to go back into app and we need to actually import this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a script and I'm going to basically just say import um, and I'm going to import the header nav from uh, the dot slash components forward slash header nav dot view so let's copy this create a components export and pass through header nav now we can obviously pass this on top here and I can just say header nav like that go back in and you can see here we currently have a header nav now we can't actually click this to toggle it like I wanted to um, because we it's not got a height let's just give it a width of 32 and a height of 32 pixels quickly so you can see where that is it's right there so now if I click this you can see it's active is now set on top of that if we click it again you can see it disappear so we can toggle that on and off so that function is now working but we can't actually see anything so let's let's go sort that so back in here we're going to actually wrap these elements in a diff i don't know why i did dot diff there which has a background of gray 800 700 a min height of screen which means it's going to be the full minimum of the full height of whatever screen you're on and then we're going to have text white so obviously all the text is readable on the actual screen and we're going to paste this back in here just like that just so this has a wrapper now if we go back here you can see that's looking a lot nicer so back in our header nav we're going to go under div and we're going to create a h1 with the class of text center if I can actually spell text center, we're going to then going to have text to Excel. We're going to make it uppercase and we want it to be font light. We're going to have tracking at its widest. Now tracking basically allows you to, um, it makes it wider. Look, if I hover over this, you can see it gives it letter spacing. And then in here, we're just going to say sanity news, just like that. Hit save go back and you can see sanity news is now sat there it looks good uh, and that's what we're currently seeing so inside our header you can see here we have our hamburger next to it and obviously our text so let's go back here and we need to we need to now style our hamburger so underneath our script tag here we're going to create a scoped css styling so it only affects anything inside of this uh, template tag here so we're going to start off with a menu toggle just like it shows there and this is going to be position of absolute then once we've got the position of absolute we're just going to give it a bit of spacing from the top and the left of one rem which is about 16 pixels each um, we will then give it a width of 32 pixels and a height of 32 pixels that's just so it has a, a nice width and a height and we're going to give it a cursor we're then going to get the hamburger and inside the hamburger we're just going to say position absolute again We're then going to give it a top of 50%. We're going to give it a left of 50%. And then we're just going to do a transform translate of minus 50% to bring it back on itself. We'll give it a width of 32 pixels and a height of 32 pixels as well. I know I sell it in both places and I could probably just do width 100 and height 100. But I like setting the, the actual value so it looks right. We could actually probably remove the width and height from that one. But because this is position absolute for it to work we kind of need this one to also have the same sort of width and height the reason we're setting this here is so when we actually click it and it transforms and it basically rotates it into an x is that so the clicking point is still in the same place so we don't have to click in a different place so once we've targeted the hamburger we're basically going to get the hamburger span so we're going to say hamburger span just like that and we're just going to give this a position of absolute everything is absolute positions in my world that's just you know i'm sure a lot of people hate that but this is this is how it works we're then going to give it a transform of translate y of minus 50 percent because we want to bring that back on itself we don't want to give it a width of 100 percent that way it will be the full 32 pixels wide obviously for the bar we only want it to be about four pixels high we do want a border radius however um, and we're going to set that to 99 pixels to make the edges fully rounded after that we just want the background color to be a white i like doing capitals i don't know why and then we're just going to have a transition of ease in out like that to give it a bit more of a nicer 
a nicer transition there. Now, after we've got that span, we can actually, we can actually just take, I think these two, actually, I think we can basically copy this whole thing. So let's just copy that, delete everything in here. Oh. And basically just call it again. And now you're probably wondering why I'm doing this, but I'll explain in a second. Copy this, add a comma, then say before. And we just want after like this. Because these properties go on every single one. The only difference is we're going to grab these two once again. And underneath here, we're just going to set the content to be like that. And I just noticed I kept the top in here. We don't actually need this top or translate in here because they don't actually add any difference because we're going to set those separately. So we're going to grab the before tag here and inside the before we're going to have a top of minus eight pixels to bring it up. We're then basically going to copy this and we're going to have the after tag. So I'm just going to say after and this is just going to be eight pixels. Now this is all set up essentially. So if we go back, you can see we actually have a good looking hamburger menu here it's all set there and it looks pretty nice so back in the code underneath hamburger we now need to have a look what it looks like once it's active so we currently have the menu toggle dot is active and when that's active we want to get the hamburger span right and then we just want to set the transform dot rotate equal to 45 degrees just like that we then want to basically do the same thing again. So copy this, and this time we're gonna target the before element. And the before element is gonna be zero degrees, um, but we're also gonna set its top equal to zero as well. The reason we're doing this is we want this one to basically sync with the position of our top level span, so it looks like it merges together. Then we're gonna get the after element, and we're going to set this rotation to about negative or just even 90 degrees and also set the top to zero. So if we now save this and we go back and we click it, you can see the animation now works. These two top elements combined into one and this X and this bit basically rotate to turn into a, um, into a cross, into an X. So that's all good, so that's all working, but now we don't have a sidebar to come out with it. So it looks good, but there's some work we need to do. So back in our code, we're gonna go back into, well, we're gonna go into our components and create a new file called sidebar nav, just like that, called dot view. And in here, we're just gonna create a template, if I can spell, a template of HTML. Um, which we're going to have an aside tag because this is the proper HTML semantic tag for um, the this, this, this content on the side, <laughs> literally what it says. So in here, we're going to have another class bound with templates, strings or backticks inside of here. And we're going to say fixed top zero, left zero. We're going to give it a min height of screen so it fits the whole screen. We're gonna give it a padding top of 60. Now that's just gonna push the content inside of it down so it's not all sat too high up. We're gonna give this a set of 40. Now remember in the header, we gave it a set of 50 because we want it to sit on top of even the nav bar. The set 40 is so it sits on the top of everything else. We don't wanna give it a width of full and a max width of excess, which is 320 pixels roughly or 20 rem. We're then going to basically just say transform transform and we're just going to say duration is going to be 300 and the background gray of about 800 so it's going to have a darker gray to our overall background now the final part of this is we're going to do what we did in the header for the thing but we're going to do it in here we're going to get a strength we're going to basically do the exact same here and as you can see that's actually auto filled these for us that's lovely copilot doing that work before anyone asks and then here you can see we're going to get the menu active which we'll get in a second and if the menu is active then we're going to set the translate this should also be negative translate full 
um, and we're basically going to get the x position set to zero. Otherwise, we're going to make sure it's set to minus 100%, which is going to make it go off screen. So make sure you have that negative in front of that translate there. And now inside the sides tag, we are going to want to, let's just put in a title real quick. So we're going to have a H2 with the class of text gray 500 to make it light. So it's still visible, but not too light. Text SM font bold. We're going to have it uppercase. Don't forget the dot in there. And then after it's uppercase, we're just going to do one lot of MB2 for when we have the element underneath. And then here, we're just going to say menu like that. Let's break this down so it's easier to read. And there you go. That's now there. And we just need to get this menu is active class. So underneath our, our um, template, we're going to have a script again. We're going to set up setup. And literally, I'm going to go in head and nav. I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to copy this here. Well, I can, I'm going to copy this whole little setup part. And then we're just going to delete the toggle menu. Toggle menu again. And there you go. So that's now ready to go. So let's go back. And if we click this, nothing happens. Why? I think. Let's find out. Let's click on this. Oh, of course. So we obviously have missed out the step to add in in the app. Well, you guys probably didn't miss it out. I missed it out that I need to actually import my sidebar nav from the sidebar nav. I'm going to copy this, pull it in here, and now under our header nav, I'm basically going to create the sidebar nav. Uh, use store is not defined or computed. And that is because, once again, we've missed our import. So in here, we just need both these imports and we need to import them above our export default here. Hit save, go back, click this, and there you go. You can see the menu now pops out and it looks really good. I think we're missing a padding for the left and right, however, so we should probably create that as well. Um, so in around our um, element here, we're just gonna create a diff with the class of padding four, and then paste our H2 back in here like that, go back, and there you go. That's got a bit of padding now around the outside, which is nice, and you can see this menu now looks really good. It even works on mobile, which is one of the best parts about it. It works on desktop and mobile and anywhere you want. So there you go, so that's all set and ready to go. The next thing we wanna do is actually create our menu items. Now we're gonna create basically a, a new component for this. So let's create a new component, let's call it menu item dot view now inside of here we're just going to have a template html and this is literally going to be a router link with a bound to field and this is going to be to two i know confusing right we're then going to have a class on here which is just going to be equal to flex items center we don't want to say the padding of four so it has a bit of padding a border radius of four, sorry, a border R of four, a border right of four basically, and then a border of transparent. And we want to give it a text gray 100. So the text isn't too white, but then when we hover over it, we're going to make the text white, and we're going to make the background gray. 900 so it looks a lot darker and now we're going to use a nice little few js thing here called slot which basically just allows us to serve as a content distribution outlet in component templates itself will be replaced basically our anything you put inside of the menu item tag when you import it in somewhere else eg menu item like this anything you put inside of here let's say test transparent that will do anything you put in here so anything in here in between these tags will appear inside this slot in case you didn't know what the slot actually did uh, i'm just going to remove that for now because we don't need that just yet save and in our menu items let's just hit save because that is ready to go well it isn't we actually need a script tag and a javascript and inside of here we just need to say props and we're just going to pass an array with the two value in it because that's what we need to get from there now, I also want to add a style to this of scoped. And I'm basically going to say router link exact 
hyphen active. So what this is going to do is if this is the exact link, so whatever the two is, let's say that's forward slash um, about, if that if our router or our URL is forward slash about exactly and not forward slash about test one, two, three, if it's just forward slash about and matches this, then we will do we will style it with whatever's in here. And to do that, we'll use tailwinds at apply, which is a super useful uh, CSS flag or whatever you call these things. It's mixing. I don't know. It's really awesome. And we're just going to set the border to green 500 and the background to gray 900. Just like that. Hit saved. And now that's going to work. Now, if we did this without the exact, if you went to, let's say, forward slash about, Let's say you were on forward slash about forward slash home. If this link was forward slash about, it would also work. But that's this is just what we're doing here. This works exact. It's better for it. Um, and now let's go back into our sidebar and import this. So we're going to import our menu item item from, and we're just going to say dot slash menu item dot view, just like that. And we're going to create a components section here that and hit paste and there you go so now underneath our underneath our h2 we're just going to say menu item not like that we're going to do it how we've actually exported it menu item two and we're going to set this equal to forward slash oh and now this one's going to be a home icon so we're going to actually create a span with the material icons class and we're also going to set M right of two to push it away. And I'm going to put home in here. Then we can say home with capital H. And then we can close off our menu item. Now, what this is doing here, this span, is it's getting the material icon we want. So if we go to Google icons and we search for home, and you can see we get this home. Now, we're using the field tag, so this one here. You can see it shows you how you use it here. Um, and obviously, earlier on in this video, we went into our HTML and we actually pasted the material icons in here. So this is all you need for this to work. Now, if we close our HTML and we copy this, save, copy, paste a new one and say just for the, well, we're going to have this as authors. And this is going to be set to groups, group, maybe groups. I can't remember the icon. We'll find out in a second. And we'll say authors. Now, if we go back here, back into our app and we refresh and we open this, you can see we have our authors and our home. And you can see that that's not actually working. Group looks authors. Is that how we do it or is it groups? Let's try groups. I feel like it should have one more there. There you go. I like that. It looks better. It looks like there's more than just one author or two authors. There you go. You've got your authors, which won't work because this page does not exist yet. We haven't set that up in our router, but our home page, you can see, gets highlighted when it's on it. This is what it looks like. However, I kind of want this to touch both edges. Now, to do that, we're going to grab our menu items and we're going to create a diff with the minus margin of four. Hit paste. Let's just tab this in one. And there you go. That should now, as you can see, show around there. Also, I've just realized I've said minus margin. We need minus X because you can see it cut into the menu there, but now it does not. And there you go. So that is say, that is basically our outer wrapper setup. We've got the header setup and we've got the sidebar setup. So that's the next part. So, so I think the next part we're going to do is let's do the actual... Uh, sanity schemas here you can see here we've just got an empty schema let's actually create the post and the authors in here so we can start working on some functionality inside of our app so we just want to show some new schemas in here so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our code we're going to close the sidebar and the app for now we can actually close all of these and we can open up our studio folder here now you only need to edit inside this schemas area for now for anything we're going to be doing for this video we only need to mess around with the schemas so we can actually we're going to need to add our schemas in here now you can add them straight in here but if you want to keep it cleaner um, what we're going to do is we're going to basically create a file where we export the actual schemas and import them into here. So let's create our post schema. So here we'll create a new file and we'll call it post.js and we're basically just going to say export default and we're just going to export some things. So the first thing we export is a title. Now the title is going to be equal to post because that is um, what we're calling our um, what we're calling our schema name. So our schema is going to be posts. Now you don't want to say posts for plural, 
because it will mess up the names inside the actual um, CMS. You want to keep it um, singular. And now in name, we're basically going to do a actual like easy to read name. So the title is the what you want to show in the CMS. Name is what it's going to be called in the back end essentially. And then we're going to call the type. So the type of this is a document because we're going to have multiple fields. And now inside of our field, we're going to call give an array. And we're basically going to pass through every single field we need for our post. So the first field we need for our post is going to be a title called title. We then need a name, which is obviously going to be the URL friendly version of that name or the, sh the you know, the, the, ca the, not the camel case, the, the hyphenated, I forgot what that is called, is it kebab case? It's something like that. We're then going to call the type. Now the type of this is going to be a string and we can actually pass validation through um, our sanity schemas now this is absolutely awesome so what we're going to do is we're going to go validation and we're going to pass through a rule and we're basically just going to set this equal to an array right so we're going to say rule and then pass back now we can say rule dot required just like it shows there um so we can say required is going to be equal to this so it's required and it needs a minimum of 10 characters so this is just for demonstration so if it has, so it's required, which means it needs to, but it also needs a minimum of 10, right? And then we can say error. So if it doesn't have a minimum of 10 and it's less than 10, we can say title must be at least 10 characters long. And you can pass a custom message in here, which will show inside of the sanity CMS when we actually use it. We can then basically just give a comma here and say rule.required again. And after here, we can say dot max. And let's say the max is going to be not 100, let's say 50, because you don't want your titles too long. We can then give them a warning. So 50 mean, doesn't mean it's going to error. It won't actually break it, but we can say a, a warning of something like, oh, actually saying so that I need to use double quotes here because I'm going to be using a um apostrophe there and we're going to say it's better to use short snappy titles just like that hit save and this is basically going to be this is basically going to show inside of our schema so let's go in our schema let's import that just to test it so underneath here we're going to import our post schema from and we're just going to say dot post now what we're going to do is where it shows your type your posts here we're basically just going to pass through our post schema there um or you could just call it post lowercase probably the better option to do let's just call it that because that's what it's named in there keep it simple uh, and there you go let's also change this to be uh tabs just because that's just how everything of mine is set up hit save and there you go let's go back in here and as you can see our sanity without us even having to refresh or do anything it's already updated with this new post so in here you can see we have no posts yet so if we create a post you're going to see here and we get a title which we can type in here and you can see it updating in real time however we need more fields than just this post so let's just close this you can see it's actually saved a draft so to delete the draft we go down to this drop down and click delete here delete now and that's now gone so let's go create the rest of our post um, fields so we currently have just the um, title but we also need an author right so let's create the author so we're going to call this title and we're going to say author now we're going to have a name of author as well and the type of this one is going to be equal to reference because we don't, we're going to be creating a author schema which we're basically going to say this reference or this this what we save in our post is just going to be a reference to another schema now the other schema to actually tell it what schema we want to reference it to we can say two and pass an array of different ones we can have now we just want the type to be equal to author which we're going to create later on inside of our schemas for now we can leave that as that so once we have a type of author this will show and say hey look through the list of authors we currently have we're then going to get another title which is going to be called the excerpt which is basically just a short description 
We're going to give it a name of excerpt, a type of, instead of string, we're going to pass through text, which is a multi-line sort of uh, witty wig. So if you add in your code and you just, you, it's it's multi-line text, basically. That's, that's what it is. It's thing. We're also going to have a validation here because we do not want it to be too long. So we're going to pass through a rule. And we're only going to have one rule, so we don't need to pass an array. So we can just say rule.max, and we're going to say it can only have a maximum of 120 characters because it's only supposed to be short. Else we're going to throw an error, and the error is just going to say excerpt must be at least 120 characters. No, must be less than. Yeah, must be less than 120 characters long. There you go. Now, after the excerpt, we actually want to get the full body of the content. So here you can just see the same thing but we're just gonna set body is required because this rule is required. To be fair, all of these are required. So we wanna pass this through and just say here, author is required and stuff like that. Just, just so we're making sure we're validating our content because none of these can really not be passed through. Um, also, I've called this body, but I, I'm gonna change this to content. Um, Copilot names this like that. And we're just gonna say, I'd rather call it content. It's the content of the post and not the body because, you know, we're not dissecting anyone here. Um, <laughs> and finally, we need a title and this is going to be our image. So we're going to pass through a name image and finally the type is going to be image. So we do not need to pass anything in there. Now this, uh, we probably could set the validation to be required. So we can, the image is required, but you don't need to. You could leave this off because obviously you can just check if there's an image. If there's no image, then we don't. So that should be set. So if we go back here, you can see here, it's given us an error. That's because our author reference doesn't currently exist. So we need to create the author schema quickly. So let's go back here, create a new schema again, just call this author.js. And we're just gonna export default and then it's gonna actually be this. So in here, we just want the title of author, the name author, the type is document and the field is an array, just like the last one. But this time our title is just gonna have a name. Um, and I'm gonna call this full name. I don't know why, I just feel like full name is what we want. I don't wanna create a first and a last name, so we're just gonna have a full name grid here, which is gonna be a type of string. This is also required, so I guess we should add a rule in here. So validation rule, and it's just gonna say rule.required. Dot error, full name is required. There you go. We're then gonna pass through a short bio. Now this isn't gonna be required. I don't think you need a, necessarily need a short bio. So we're just gonna say title, short bio, just like that. We can then pass through the name as short bio and the type is equal to text it's a free form and we don't need a validation because the only thing which needs to be required is our name now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to create an avatar for our users so we're going to say type not an image i'm going to call it an avatar because that's what it is so it's not an avatar but it's you know and it's going to be a type of image now this again isn't needed but i'm going to basically just say it's going to be required because i want this one to be required you have to have an image Otherwise, I'm not happy about it. You know, I need to know, I need to see the separation. I'm just, I'm basically, I'm just showing you that you can use validation or you don't have to. It's totally up to you. Um, and that's our schemas done. So let's go back here, refresh, and hopefully, oh, we still have an issue, unknown type. And that is because we haven't imported our author schema into this here. So we just want to import, oh, import author from author and we can pass through the author schema inside of here. Refresh, and hopefully we should now be able to see this in here. And there you go, we've got our post which has an author, and if we actually have authors in here, so let's create a new author real quick. Let's call it Tyler Potts. Let's create myself. I love to make videos to teach you how to code. Sometimes I write things with the power of Vue.js and Sanity.io. I like the IO being lowercase. I don't know, it just makes sense to me. And now we need an avatar. You can see here it says avatar is required. You can see here it's actually showing us the error. So if we also didn't have this, you'd see it says full name is required. And there you go. So you can see the 
the validation is real time so it works everything in this is real time so let's upload the avatar now i actually have one inside of my google drive uh we're going to use my logo so it's in my youtube it's in my main and it's the 2021 logo I should probably update that it's 2022 now but I'll, you know i like it we're keeping it we're keeping the pink we're keeping the the hot pink sort of style here so let's hit publish and there you go that's now published this is available on the front end of the sanity application so in our post let's create a new post real quick and call this my first post now i want to show you something amazing about this let's copy this let's open this up in a new tab and let's just break this out and slam that there and let's slam this to the side so we're going to have two side by side views here now i'm going to go in my post and i'm going to select this first post here so you can see we have two different uh, things here now i think i showed this in the demo of the video but all i'm going to say is look as you type here you can see it's just real time and it's absolutely amazing so if you've got two people working on this at once you can actually see it says tyler potts is working on this and tyler potts is working on this you can also see there's a little thing this is what i've done so you can actually refer the changes here refer so if you don't want anything there you can actually delete it so if you make a bunch of different changes and keep coming back and changing it you can actually see all the changes you've made in here um and there you go you can see just edited and created so we go to just edited um well that was nothing because that was 12 seconds ago um but there you go you can see here that it just changes and it looks really cool so let's close this uh and in here let's give this title my first post with an exclamation mark to make sure you know it. and now it's going to ask for an author it says author is required let's go in here and you can see here we've got tyler so we can actually just click me and there you go i'm now there also i wanted to show you that here if we have look it says here title must be at least 10 characters long so you can see that validation is working really nicely now if we type a lot of words in here we should hopefully get our warning in a minute that it's too long there you go it probably it probably was waiting for me to stop typing and now it's going to show age code but it's better to use short snappy titles but it's not going to stop me from using this it's just telling me that it's better too so if you need to like prompt people to you know what they're doing you, you need to tell them hey you, you can't do that it's better not to you can it's really nice and really really intuitive and i really like it so inside the excerpt what we're going to do is we're just going to say it's something along the lines of my first post is better than yours because it's because it is powered by sanity and few js there you go we'll just we'll just flex in our power here with our sanity and few js here now inside of content we can just add some lorem ipsum so let's just get some lorem let's go to a lorem ipsum generator generate some posts and there you go let's just copy this whole section here copy paste and there you go you can see that's all in there now we need an image so let's just go into my i think it's my where are we uh pictures and in here i'm just going to grab this wallpaper picture and there you go uploads that there dot png and that's now uploaded so that's the image and you can see that uploaded on this side real quick as well so even though an image obviously takes a lot longer to send across the internet it still did it really fast i know we're on a local host um but even on when you actually connected it it's also pretty fast as well which is absolutely amazing so let's hit publish let's close this second window here and full screen back this uh and there you go that's now published and that's all set so you can see the power of uh the the schema system inside of um sanity and this is just the top of it there is so many more types there is so many more validation things you can actually do like there's a lot of validation you could do which is really nice um, and definitely helps especially when let's say you've got some um, clients who you need to let use this so let's say you're building a website for a client um, letting them allow them giving them some rules to stay between it's good to stop them from breaking the website making it look ugly so you can let's say if um for, so one of them is inside of our author i think it is no our post where is it this one which says at ah, max 120 if the excerpt is longer longer than 120 it actually starts to break onto more lines and it just doesn't look right especially when you've got a post next to it which has a smaller excerpt so giving them a strict excerpt to say hey it, it has to be a max of 120 that really prompts them to be like okay we can't go anymore so we can do a bit less let's shorten our our description of this post basically um, and it's just just small things like that that helps a client be able to you know 
do some cool things. But anyway, so we've we've got onto that. Now we the next up step is actually displaying our posts on the front end and getting that real time also on the front end. So when someone po publishes a new post or changes one, it updates on the front end in real time. So let's actually work on that. Okay guys, so we're gonna quickly create a style for a button just so we have a global button we can reuse everywhere. Um, I'm just gonna call this obviously button and I'm just gonna say at apply. Now the at apply is gonna have a background green or not green, green of 600. We're gonna have a duration of 300, a font of bold, a padding Y of two, but a padding X of four. We're then gonna give it some rounded edges, uh, let's say large, and also an inline block. Um, so hopefully that should look pretty good. We're also gonna give this a hover state. So when we hover over it, we're gonna say at apply background, green and i'm going to go 700 because i want it to get darker so it looks like you're clicking inwards um and there you go let's save that and let's just create a button with the class of button up here and let's uh let's just call this my call button right here there you go that's that's the name of our button if you go back you can see we've got my call button right here now i don't know should we block capital that now we'll leave that at. there you go so that's what the button's going to look like we're going to reuse that component over and over again or just sorry not the component that class over and over again the reason i haven't created a button component is because it's a bit overkill for just um because i might sometimes use a link and i want it to be a button and so forth obviously in this tutorial we might not but you get the point um However, if I was creating something more complex, I'd create a proper button style. So let's just close app.view now. We don't need it. And let's go into our home view in views. Inside of here, what we're going to do is we're basically going to, well, let's just delete this first. And also let's change this to be a main tag there. Um, I also want to rename this to home page. I like things to be prefixed or suffixed with um, the correct class. Like home could, it's a general term. It, it doesn't really give me much. I'm going to create a section in here, which we're going to have the container class on. We're also going to have MX Auto to center it um, and a padding of four to give it a bit of spacing. So this is just like our container class. And then we're going to create a H1 and we're just going to say latest posts. We're going to give this a class and we can give this just say the simplest 2XL and a margin bottom of eight because we're going to have some content below it. So let's just create the grid for our the grid for our actual system here. So we're going to create diff.grid. Um, and we're basically going to have all our cards in a grid, but we're going to start off with grid gap four. Now, below here, what we want to do is just create, we're going to want to create a new component basically. So we're going to create a post card component. Um, so let's go create that. So inside of components, let's right click new file and call it post card.view, just like that. And let's just create a template real quick so we have it there. So in this file, we'll create a diff with the class of background gray uh, 800 because our background is currently gray of 700. So we want these to be slightly darker. We then want to give it the class of rounded LG. I'm also going to say padding for a bit of flex, flex column because I want it to be column. And then I want to give it the SM flex row on small screens there so there you go so that should be good for our actual outer card we don't want to give this an image and this image is basically just going to be well we need to basically create some some special code for this so we're just going to leave this blank for the moment um i'm going to comment it out we're going to do the rest of it first the image is going to be last we've got to create a um we're going to use sanity to basically create a url from the images we upload because currently i'll show you what it sends back basically but the when we query sanity for the data it only gives a reference or a url to the image which you need to actually convert into an actual url and i'll explain more once we get there but let's just create another diff inside of here this can have the class of flex one flex and flex cull just to basically give us some content here um, we're gonna give it h3 which we're gonna again we need to give this some classes and the classes we're gonna be putting on this is a text lg an md text 2xl for the responsiveness so on uh, medium screens we'll have it bigger and then we're gonna give it a font bold with uh, a margin bottom of four 
then we can actually just pass through the post title. So this postcard is going to receive a post uh, prop. So if we go down here and we create a new script and we say JavaScript, we can say props. And in here we can say post just like that. That way we'll be able to pull through our actual, well actually not, let's break this down. We're going to actually, I'm going to use a post object here, so a prop object, and we're going to give it a post. We're going to have the type of it be object and the required to be true. So this means we need a post. If we don't, it will throw an error. This is a good way to basically say if this, if, basically this will help us identify if there's anything that's not going through right, or if it's the wrong type or anything like that. It just helps and this is a good way to write it. So next up, we're just going to go back up into our template here. So underneath the post title, we're going to also get back a few other things. Um, and I'll, I'll go through all the things we're going to get back in detail. But for now, I'm just going to write it out ready so you can see. So we're going to have text gray 500. We're going to have MD text LG. Oh, um, so we're going to have that a, a nice light gray with a text of LG. We're then going to say MB4 and a flex of one to make it stretch out as big as we can. And then we're just going to say post.exa. So if you remember, we inside of our sanity real time, our post will have, we basically we're going to get all this information. We're going to get the title, we're going to get an author reference. So we're going to have to still query to get the authors. We're going to get an excerpt and also the content and an image. So, but this image will come back as a reference. We need to convert into an actual URL using some tools that Sanity have provided. And I'll go over those in a minute. Uh, so again, we're gonna have a post excerpt and then under here, we can have another flex element and we can say SM flex col. We're gonna have MD flex row. And then we're just gonna say justify between and items start MD items end. So what's going on here? So we're basically just going to say we've got we want this element to be flex. We want it to, its content to be a column. So it stacks on top of each other on small screens but on a medium screen and above. We're going to basically pull it back to being in line with each other. So once we have this diff, we're then going to create a, another image. Well, another diff on the inside. So we're going to have a diff. This one's going to have the class of uh, flex item center and SMMB4 with an MD, so a medium screen of MB0. So we don't want any on the medium screen because they're going to be next to each other. Obviously, row puts them beside each other, whereas column puts them above each other where we're going to need some spacing. So under here, we're going to have an image. Um, now, the image. It's, it's uh, again, the same as the one above. We're just going to copy it out for now because we're going to create a, a helper class for this later on. Although, you know what? We can just do this. Let's just go here. I'm going to say fee if, and we're going to say post.author.avatar because we're going to basically get the avatar of our author. And we're going to do the same for this. We're basically just going to say fee if post.image. So if we have the image, then we're going to display. Otherwise, we're not going to. So now in the diff below, oh, we're going to create two paragraph tags, one with the text of white and a margin right of four, which we're basically just going to say post.author.full name. We're then going to create another paragraph which is going to have the class of text gray 500. And we're then going to just slide in the text small as well to give it small text. You can see all the, by the way, if you ever wonder what these do, um, you can kind of see, you should be able to see them when they pop up like this when I'm hovering over them. Um, but if you ever do wonder, then just give me a shout in the comments and I will explain what they do. Or you can have a look at Tailwind's documentation. Now inside of here, we're going to say post dot underscore created at. Now we're gonna have to format this date, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like unformatted to start with. Um, and then we're gonna create some functions for this. Now underneath this uh, this second diff here, let's just break this away so you can see that's separate from the bit above. We're gonna create a router hyphen link, which for some reason has decided to sit down there. And we're gonna bind two. Now the two is gonna be bind, we're gonna do some temporary literals. I'm going to say slash post slash 
and then we're going to pass through the post ID. So I'm just going to go in here and say post dot underscore ID, just like that, because that's what it's going to come back as. And then we could give this our class of button, which we made earlier. So we're going to say button, and we're going to call this read more, just like that. Hit save, and now we can go back into our home view. We can create a script tag below here. Um, let's just say JavaScript, and we're going to import a few things. So let's just import on mounted, on unmounted, ref, and computed. And we're going to import these from Vue.js. Um, so obviously unmounted is the lifecycle method. On unmounted is when, again, another lifecycle method when the component is unmounted. We're then going to get a reference so we can use that to create some uh, ref. Uh, reference states and also computed so we can also get stuff from the getters from our state or store sorry we're then going to get our store so we're going to say import use store from vuex and now finally we're going to say import sanity from and this is going to be from our we're going to go back out one and go client.js I skip the client bit, the .js bit there. So you can say import that. Now we need to import our new postcard, which we got. So postcard from, and we can say dot dot slash components forward slash postcard. Now inside of here, we can create components and we can pass through our postcard there. And then we want to create a setup method where we're going to do the rest of our logic inside of here. So we're going to create a constant called a constant called subscription, right? And it's going to be equal to a ref of null. And this is where we're going to set our subscription to the back end or to the sanity's um, posts where anytime the post changes, it will automatically update and update it in here. And that's what our subscription is going to do. It's going to be a subscription to the real time uh, sanity back end. We're then going to go through here and we're going to create a, we're going to get our store. So our store. So we're going to say use store like that, which will get reference to our actual store. If I can find it, store component here. So this is going to get this for us. Um, now after store, we can just go under and say const post is equal to, and we're going to say computed. I'm going to pass through an arrow function here and we're going to return store.getters dot posts so we just basically want to say we can actually make this shorter as well we can basically just bring this to that and remove that like that just so it looks a bit neater as well so we're going to get a computed value from our store called getters and we're going to get the posts so as soon as that's computed we're going to have our posts we don't want to use the on mounted feature so we're going to say on mounted and we're going to pass through an arrow function. And now we're going to say store.dispatch. And we're going to create a, a value called fetch posts. And we're going to be passing a parameter to this, um, which is going to be how many posts we actually want to bring. And we're going to say six by default. We want to be able to bring back six posts by default. You know, what? let's make this free because um, then we can do testing. We can change this later. I don't want to create a constant. And now this is where we're about to, this is this is where we're about to actually start using Sanity's querying language. Now it's really awesome. Um, and if we go to Sanity query, it's G-R-O-Q, so how queries work, or the cheat sheet would probably be better. But you can see here, it is absolutely really powerful and you can do a lot with it. It's the G-R-O-Q, um, graph relational object queries. Um, and basically there's a lot where you could do with it. And I'm going to show you how to use a bunch of different things for this. So back in here, we're going to set our query and our query for our posts is going to be pretty simple. We're going to do, um, basically star, and then we're going to pass through these braces. And then we're going to say, we want the type equal to our post. So we want a the type to be post. We could obviously also put author in here. So these are our schemas. So we can get the type by going to our schema and going in here. So you can see here our name posts. So that's what we pass through for a post and author is what we pass through for an author. Just so you know how you 
didn't get those how how i got to this and that's all we're going to do for our first quiz so all we want to do is we want to get all the posts now we're going to go under here and we're going to say subscription dot value is equal to sanity dot listen and we're going to listen for this query so anytime anything happens to this query so so anything that happens to any of the posts it's going to listen and we're basically going to say we're going to subscribe to the changes so we're going to say subscribe and we're going to get the updated content there so let's just break this down to make it look a bit neater i'm going to break that down and break that down there. now in here we're going to basically just say we're going to create a switch statement because this update is going to pass us back a few different things so we're just going to say update dot type or update dot transition sorry that's copilot throwing me off there um and in our transition we're going to create some cases now the first case is if it gets updated so if anything's updated we're going to say i'm just going to create a uh, log here and we're going to say post updated and then we'll just pass through the update as well just so we can see what actually happens there we can get another case and another case is going to be a peer now this is going to happen when a new when you create a whole new basically a whole new post so let's just say console.log post appeared and we can pass through the update and break again and then the last one is disappear now this means when it obviously disappears and there you go we're just going to pass through this as well so they're just the switches we need when we're subscribed and basically we're going to do stuff in here that's going to basically take us to um we're just going to either update the post so if it gets updated we're going to update it live in our um store we're then going to make it if post appears um, appeared we're going to obviously add a new post to our um, store or if it disappears we're going to remove a post from our store because we're going to get our posts and we're going to store them now we're going to go to uh, underneath this and underneath on mounted we're going to say on unmounted and we're going to say subscription dot value dot unsubscribe so what's happening here is we are just asking we're basically saying okay so when this unmounts we want to unsubscribe from value because if we don't and we remount we unmount and then we remount you're going to have duplications and it's going to probably cause some issues so it's better to make sure you unsubscribe from things when you begin. and finally we're just going to return our posts here so this isn't going to really do much if we go back to our code here and we refresh the postcard the postcard compare has been registered but it's not in use so here we can basically just call post card and then we would pass through our post which is actually not going to be there yet we basically want to say fee for and i just want to say for post and i post i in posts we're going to get a key which is just going to be equal to i and then we're going to pass through our post in our actual post here now this is a good dirty thing because obviously we haven't set up this dispatch or anything so if we go back you'll just see we get fetch posts isn't there but you can see the latest posts is here so let's actually create some of the functionality for this let's actually get the post to start with so inside of our code you can see here we use a straight away when we mount we're going to ask for our post we say store dot dispatch fetch posts the reason we do this is because we need to initially get all our posts you can see here our subscription dot value sanity is obviously listening but this doesn't listen this doesn't pull all the posts to start with instead we need to get our posts in a different call and that's why i'm going to use store dot dispatch so if we go into our store we can create a action called fetch we're going to call this fetch if i can actually type fetch posts which is going to be going to have a commit so we can actually push and it's going to pass through well we don't need the state after here we can pass through our limits i would probably call it limit or maybe something else uh but by default we're going to set this to null so inside of our fetch posts we're going to say const query so we'll create another query like we did before 
and we'll just go pass through some back ticks so we can do some temporary literals and I'm just going to say star underscore type is equal to post so if it's equal to post we're then going to do so okay so I'm going to pass through some string to and I'm going to do dot 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 back author like this so you may see what's good you may want to ask what's going on here but basically I'm saying we're going to get the post but we also want to get the author we want to basically structure it like this we want to say get the post and structure it with all the content in there and then also get the author because we have a reference insanity to our author here all we're going to do is we're going to join the author table so the reference this to our post when we pull our post through so it has our author in our post and that's what's happening here we're basically just saying okay pull it through and that's that we're then going to order these so we're going to say order and we'll say we're going to order by created at and we're going to pass through our uh, we're going to pass it through as descending and finally we're going to pass through a limit so we're going to say if there's a limit then we're going to say again template strings and i'm going to pass through this um i don't want to call this square brackets and then we're going to pass through zero so we're going to say we're going to start at zero and then we're going to get all the posts up to our limit we pass through otherwise we're going to get nothing so let me just go back through this query and break it down so we're going to get a post right we're getting a post which we're going to left join a um or right join left join outer join inner join it's a join i'll figure it out um we're going to join our authors into our post so we're going to pull through the information from our authors table or authors database into our post we're then going to say order created at by descending so we're going to make sure they're ordered in the right way so they go to newest first and then we're going to say limit them if we have a limit um, by the limit so we're going to say we want zero to um, for example three and this is um, exclusive so the three this is inclusive so it always starts at zero whereas obviously the limit is exclusive meaning if it's three that's going to be two it's going to get us from zero, one, and two, which is three posts. Now we're going to use this query. So let me pull this back up. So we're going to use this query and we're going to basically pull it through. Let's just move that there. And we're going to say sanity dot, no, that's not it. Sanity dot fetch. Now do we, we need to import sanity at the top here. So I'm just going to say import sanity from, and we can say dot slash clients or dot dot slash dot dot slash client to get it from our actual client now sanity dot fetch and then we're going to fetch it by our query so you can see here we have our query here and we're just going to fetch that through we're then going to say dot then and we're going to pass through we're basically going to get our posts so if we get our post we can then say commit set posts be equal to posts just like that so that should hopefully get all of our posts and bring it through we now need to go up into our mutations and we need to create set posts and we're going to pass through our state and our posts and basically we're just going to say state dot posts is equal to posts now that's all great but we're going to want to be able to get these posts as well so i'm going to create a getter to get our posts and we're going to say state is equal to you know getter sorry we're going to get a post which is state and we're going to say state.posts.sort because although we're pulling them back sorted in an ordered array sometimes when we add new ones in and we pull them from let's say when we update them they may reorder and get to the wrong order so what we're going to do is before we get them every single time we're going to sort them um, we're going to say a b is equal to and we can just say a new date and we're going to say b dot underscore created at minus a new date a dot underscore created at oh and also this needs to be dot get time because obviously we don't compare dates we compare the time the time stamp so get time just like that we don't actually need that post dot so let's break this down 
Oh, and we're gonna need another one of these by the looks of it, or am I wrong? No, I've done it wrong here. We need to delete that and then pass that through. There you go. So what we're doing here is we're just saying, okay, so we're gonna get new posts, so we're gonna get our state. We're gonna say, okay, I need to get the post from our state, which is up here, the posts, which we're gonna set down here. We're then going to sort them, uh, and we're gonna pass through A and B, which is obviously post one, post two, and it got so forth. So this one then will then be post two, post three, post four, post five, post five, post six, and so on. And then we're basically just gonna say, we're gonna sort them by the new date of B. We're gonna sort them by the date of B minus the date of A, which is gonna give us back the latest posts. So we could probably say latest posts or post descending. So this works as it is. So we're gonna leave that like that. So now we have these posts, which we're able to get back in our area and we were able to set our posts. There's gonna be a few issues we have, but I think for now, this is gonna work perfectly. So let's go back into our home view. Let's actually go to our home view. And there you go, you can see my first post is already appearing here. So if we refresh, you can see my first post, my first post is better than yours because it's powered by Sunny and Vue.js. So if you remember the beginning of this video or earlier on in this video, we created this, which has the excerpt and all of this in. The only thing we're missing is the actual images and stuff like that. But if you can see here, we can actually break this down. And also you can see the date just is not appearing. And I think there's actually a reason for that not appearing. If we go back to our postcard, I did create it at like this. This should be capitals, I'm pretty sure like that. And there you go, you can see we get a time zone sort of time stamp there, which isn't, isn't pretty, so we need to format that. So let's go and create the, the stuff we need to format this. Now I'm gonna create, we're gonna use these functions a lot. So I'm gonna create an actual component in here, or an actual, um, not a component, but a file um, as our utility. So I'm gonna call this uh, utils, not twos, utils.js just like that and inside here we can say import sanity from and we're just going to say the client we're then going to import the image url builder so the image url builder from sanity forward slash image url so what the image url builder takes the a reference from an image or the source of the image and we basically create an actual image URL. We're then gonna say import, or sorry, const builder is equal to a new image URL builder and we're gonna call it, we're gonna pass through our sanity information so it knows where and who it's making the request for. Now we're gonna say export const create URL. So this is the first one we're gonna do. And this is gonna take in a few things. It's gonna, it's gonna have a source. It's going to have a width, which by default is going to be equal to 300. And I'm going to set a height, which by default we're going to have as 300 as well. And then we're going to turn this into an arrow function where we basically just return builder.image and we're going to pass through our source. We're going to pass through, we're then going to, after this, we're going to pass through a width. We're then going to get a height of height and we're just going to ask for the url so what we're doing here so how this works is we basically get some let me show you so inside of our request our network we should hopefully have this might be hard to find um one of these should hopefully be our query And this is what we're getting back. You can see it, can we preview this? There you go, you can see we're getting this back result. And in this image, you can see we get an asset which has a reference and a image type. Now this is essentially the source. This whole image is classed as the source. And we're gonna to need to pass that through into our create URL to get that source you see here. We're then gonna basically set the width of it and the height we want, because we can actually choose whether it comes back, what width and what height it comes back at, so we can get the right uh, so we can get the right size image with the right, you know, so it's not too big. If we only want a 300 by 300 image, we can then request a 300 by 300 image that actually looks um, and doesn't have as bad, um, 
file size so the file size will be a lot smaller of course when you create it smaller and then you get the url of that and we pass it back to this create url function now under here we're going to create another export const and this one is going to be our format format date which is going to basically just take a date in and we'll use an arrow function to say return new date which we pass the date in and we're going to say dot two locale date string just like that we don't need to do anything and that should hopefully give us back a formatted date which we actually like and want so there you go i know we could just do literally write this and say format date but this looks neater and it works a lot better so if we go back into our postcards here we can now import these new this new these new things so we can go here and we can say we want to import our format date and create url from utils and then we can actually just basically create a setup here where we return our format date and create url so inside of here let's first off format the date so we're going to say format date and pass through our actual date in here hit save and let's have a look how that's looking can't resolve sanity image url that's because we haven't installed it yet so we need to get this open this up and basically stop the surfer now inside of our directory our root directory we want to say npm install sanity image url and that's going to basically install the well the sat what we need for this actual project so let's just go back here and surf it again and now hopefully this time it should work without an issue if we go to our package.json you can see sanity image is now installed and we can actually use it so you can see that's done that and in here we get it, it's all running again so format date should now work and there you go you can see we get the first of the third 2022 it is currently the first of the third 2022 so the next thing we want to do is actually display our images because currently we have no source so what we're going to do is we're going to bind this and we're just going to say uh, create URL where we're going to pass through the image now the image we want is basically just going to be our image or sorry our post image and then we're going to pass through some width and height so for this we're going to pass through a 480 by 320 for our actual class uh, image so if we hit save and we go back you can see our image is now appearing now it doesn't look very pretty because we need to add some styles to it but it's now appearing and it's in here which is great so that's created the url for us now we can remove this alt and give a class here now the class we want to give this is basically we just want to make it a block element we want to give it a width of full we don't want to say on small we want a max width of xs which is about 320 pixels and we want a margin right of four we then want to say object cover so it actually covers the um, size we've given it and we want to say mb4 smmb0 because once this obviously goes into the coal we want to have some margin on the bottom but when we go back into the row we no longer want that margin at the bottom so there you go you can see that image looks pretty good and if we change the size you can see this whole thing is responsive and you can see why we did all that tailwind styling there you can see it's very responsive as well it goes right down um to what 320 which is the smallest phone size i know of or probably smaller to be fair which it might start breaking at the 200 mark but otherwise it's looking pretty responsive um and there you go so that's looking pretty good we, we've got one post but now let's have a look what happens when we edit this post so if we if i just bring this side by side we get this and we go here and we go to console now inside of here let's just say did i not just slam you to the side um let's just update this post we're going to do double tags and then when we hit publish we should you can see post updated and you can see it's it's passed through here the information we need now the one thing we do need is the result so this is what's changed you can see here it's now got three slashes now if you look at the mutations you can see here this is the revision so you can see the revision we've done and this is what's changed so you've got title here three 
and there's a lot of other information here you can take through so as you can tell we're using the transition to tell what type of update has been made in here so this is an update um, of type mutation which means it's been changed um, and we can like update this as well and hit publish now that's all good that's changed but it has not changed in our actual code here now that's because we're not actually doing it all we're doing is console logging the change what we need to do is actually create a function to handle that change so if we go back into our Vue.js we can we can actually close this postcard.view utils and all we need is our home view and our index here so back in here we said post updated and we just did nothing about it we just we just said do post update so one thing we need to make note of inside of our results here is that author no longer comes back as an actual author object but instead just as a reference again so we're going to need to make a request to actually get our author once these results changes so we can say okay a post's been updated we've got the post information but we do not have the author information so what we're going to do is we're just going to say okay get this information and then we're going to make a call back to the api to re-get our author so in here in the update we're basically just going to say sanity.getDocument now this allows us to get a single document by its id you don't need to pass through a type or anything because the ids are unique enough to be able to go across and through each other so we're going to say update.result.author and we're going to pass through the author ref we're then going to say dot then we're going to get our author and we are going to say store dot dispatch and we're going to dispatch an update post we're then going to pass through our dot 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 update dot result and then we're going to pass through the author as well so what we're saying here is update our post and then we'll send through an object which it has all the information from our result so we're just going to break it out down into this and then we're going to pass through our author as well in the same object so it will update and replace the current author inside of update result and that's we now need to go create that inside of our index here so in here we're going to create a update post so inside of our actions underneath fetch post we're going to say update post and we're going to basically get another commit so we can push to our mutations and then we're going to get the post we're then going to say commit and we're going to say update post where we're going to push from our update posts into this dot state dot posts dot map and we're basically going to look for the post so we're going to say if the post dot underscore id is equal to post dot underscore id we're going to pass back the post otherwise we're going to pass back p so this should actually be set posts again not update posts because here we're going to have um all we're going to do is update all our posts so what we're doing here is we're going to map through all of our posts and we're going to say if the post id matches so if we have the same post we're then going to pass through the new post we pass through in update post otherwise we're going to just leave it as it is um, and that's way we're going to basically not have to create another mutation and just use the same mutation we already have there so if we save this well, this should just work how it is so if we go back and we go back to this view let's just refresh this side and let's update this to remove the two posts click publish you can see instantly on the right here that's now lost its thing now to make a more dramatic change let's let's remove this and actually write in here my first awesome post and let's hit publish and on the left here you can see that's updated instantly so you can see the real-time power of sanity and Vue.js mixed together to create this super fast and easy to write um, piece of code with only a few lines of code we can get this to actually subscribe to a, a query and make all the chat any change that's made we can update which is absolutely awesome so the next one we need to do is in we need to do appear so when we create a new post we want the actual new post to be set so what we can do is we can basically go into here just remove this 
and we're just going to say sanity dot get documents we're going to do the same thing let me just copy this again we're actually going to do the same thing but instead of update post we're going to call add new post and we're going to pass through the exact same thing so the only thing changing here is the dispatch call so let's hit save and then let's go into our index and create the add new post. We'll pass through our commit and our post. And we're basically just going to say commit set post. Again, we're going to be reusing the mutation we already have. We're just going to be passing through the different information. So I'm going to pass through sorry not add post this is going to be post and then we're going to say dot 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 this dot state dot posts just like that let's go down here let's just close this off and that's going to be basically going to go in there and say hey we've got some new posts um, but we're going to update this we're going to set our posts to be this new array of posts although we could probably add this to the end of our array which is probably the better thing to do so let's say this and say post so that'll add it to our end of our array and then our getter will reorder it to make sure it's all in the right order so let's save that let's go back here and this is where we can actually test that getter if it's working and that's let's create a whole new post so let's create a new document it's going to ask us what type i'm going to say post and then here we're going to say my second post we're going to pass through our author which is going to be me our excel will say my second post is the best one yet and then the content let's just go back to the original post copy the content from there come back to my second post and paste that in now you can see there the second post we could actually move around with our second post and not have any issue going back and forth between different posts because it saves as you currently run so if you was to not publish this and you was to just head out and go somewhere else, you know, go into a different area of this, it will automatically save a draft of your current state of your post. So we hit upload, we can just select a random image from my library, let's select the Starry Night one, click open, and that's going to upload Starry Night, and there you go, that's now there and ready to go. So let's hit publish and see what happens. You can see instantly on the left, this has come through and it's looking really good. Now I've just noticed one thing, my image is not appearing here for my logo we should have a logo on the left and i think that is because i forgot to add in our avatar yes you can see here, there's no source for our avatar so we've got to do the same thing we did above we're going to say create url we're going to say post dot author dot avatar and then we can basically start this let's just save that and see if it starts appearing and I think I can already see it's appearing. It looks really good. Um, we need to style that up. <laughs> so let's go back through here and actually give this some styling. So we're going to add a class to this. And in the classes, we're going to have it rounded to be full. We want it to be a completely round object. We're going to give it a margin right of four. And we're going to give it a width of 12, which is about 48 pixels. And also a height of 12. Oh, 12, not that. We're then going to pass through the dimensions instead of 48 we're going to say we'll say about 100 each just so it's double the resolution there and there we go for retina screens and stuff like that there you go let's go back let's go back here and you can see that's now working and that looks good that's all working but now what happens if we delete a post so if we go back here back into our home you can see delete a post actually does nothing once again so delete a post is slightly different to the other two and that that meaning it actually basically just we're just going to call in here instead of doing any sort of get document we're just going to say store dot dispatch and the function is going to be called remove post and we're just going to say update dot document id so if there is to disappear we're just going to say remove this document with this id hit save go back into our index we're going to create the remove post function with a commit coming through and then we're going to pass through the id we're then going to say commit set posts and we're just going to pass back the post filtered out 
with the new ID missing. So if it's ID matches the ID we're removing, then it's just going to remove it from our post. Again, using the set post for absolutely everything here, so we don't have to create multiple mutations, although creating multiple mutations isn't a bad thing, it just keeps the code a bit cleaner. You're able to do everything inside of your actions and call the same mutation to. So let's see if that works. So let's go back here. And now let's go to our second post. And we're like, you know what? This post, it wasn't ready. We need to delete it. So let's go in here, underneath here, and we can click delete. Looking for posts. Are you sure you want to delete my second post? We are. Hit delete. And there you go. You can see on the left, it's deleted the correct document and pulled this one back up. So that has been deleted in real time as well. And it's completely gone. So you can see that now works absolutely awesomely. So this is now working real time to get new posts, update posts and show them. So let's just recreate that second post one last time. Let's go into my first post quickly and copy the content because I'm going to need that. And let's create a new post. Now in this post, we're going to call this my second post remastered because, you know, we've remastered it. Um, and then the author is going to be me. The excerpt is going to be my second post is better than it was before. And then inside of our content, we're just going to paste that content. And finally, the image will once again be the Starry Night. But I think if we hit browse, you can actually see the image we've used before is actually here. So we can click this and just hit publish. And there you go. It's reappeared back in our newsfeed on the left. So the next thing we're going to work on is the actual post. When we click this, we're actually going to see the post information here in full and the actual content. Because currently we only see the excerpt and that's not very fun. So we want to read more. So I've just realized another thing we're going to need to add as well is we're going to need to add a load more button. So remember we said we're going to load three posts at once. But what happens if we want more? So let's create a couple more posts. Let's just say in here this is the third post. Um, and I'm just gonna obviously set this to me. We're gonna create some more authors soon once we get to the author section of this tutorial, but for now we're gonna focus on the posts. So the excerpt, my third thread, my third post is really cool. Uh, the content in here could be, again, let's just get some lorem ipsum generator. Just this, this should hopefully give us some. There you go, just copy anything that comes out. If we refresh, is it different each time? It is, oh, interesting. Uh, let's put the content in there and then let's just upload a new image. So this is another post. Let's just use this Darling and Frank's uh, poster here. And once that's done, also don't forget to keep an eye on the left here. We'll be able to go publish and bam, there you go. You can see the third post is now appearing. Let's go back to posts, create one more. And now just before I create this one, actually, you know, what, let me write out first the fourth post again also authored by me and the xlb my fourth post is boring just boring boring just boring go paste that back in here and then we're gonna get a new image i think we're gonna just go for let's go for this one it looks pretty cool um and there you go so now before i hit publish i just want to say obviously we have our code set to only allow for free um Posts when we first launch it. So now when we add this, publish, you're going to see it still adds the post, but that means we have four. That's because this is real time. It's a new post. So it's actually going to update us, even though we're only set to have three posts. We now have four. But if we refresh the page, you'll see we only have two. Now, it's, sorry, it was cached. If we refresh the page, we now only have the three posts. We have the, from the latest, the fourth post, the third post, and the second post. We do not have the third post. We're going to need to load more button. Um, and that's why I set the thing to be three and not six like I had originally. So I can actually demo this. So we need to load more button. So let's go back and actually create the load more button. So the first thing we need to do is go back into our home view at the top here and we actually have to create the button so under the grid gap we're going to create a button just a simple button we'll break this down and we're going to say fee if now we're going to do something we're going to go to the store we're going to get the state and we're going to look for the total posts so if you remember at the start we set this total post now we're going to have to actually get this we're going to modify our 
fetch post query to also fetch the total post and i'll show you how we do that in a second so let's go back here we're going to go feet if we've got the total posts once we have the total posts i'm going to go at click and i'm going to set this equal to a store function here i'm just going to do it here we're going to say dispatch and then we can give this load more posts which is actually going to take in another parameter which we could then just say Let's say, again, we'll set it to three. Um, we might even set it to one because I just want to load one at a time so I can demonstrate it when I add more. Then let's go to our class oh, class, and set this equal to button and we'll give this a margin top of eight to push it down. And the wording for this will just be load more. Hit save. Let's go back to our application quickly and refresh. Hopefully this should work. Oh, it's not currently shown because our total posts, uh, store.state.total post, this is wrong. Anyway, this total post should be if that is greater than post.length. That's what I wanted to do because we want to compare it to, I just closed my, my home view, sorry. Yeah, we want to compare the total post to this, although we should also still get an error because... We are not doing anything. I'm refreshing the wrong one. We're not actually doing anything here. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to change this fetch post to be two. Just because I want to set, I just want it to fetch the first two. And then we're going to fetch one from there on afterwards. So it's easier. And then we're going to go back to our store. And now we're going to add in inside of our fetch post. We're also going to set the total post all together. So to do that, what we need to do is we're going to, well, underneath the sanity fetch, we're going to basically just say, we're going to create a new query. So we're going to const count query. I'm going to name this. And we're basically going to say star. Or sorry, we're going to wrap this in a count. So we're going to say count star underscore type is equal to post. And then wrap that again at the end. And that is all we need to do for this actual count query. And we can just do sanity.fetch count query. And here you go. Set. We can call a mutation called, uh, let's finish off, set total posts. So up here, let's just go set total posts, state and total posts. And now we can say state.total posts is equal to total posts. I'm also going to add a um, increment total posts and set that to state or state. And then we'll say increment, which by default is going to be equal to one. Um, and in here, I can just say total post is plus equal to the increment we want to increase it by. So if we call this now, so if we go back to our add new post, we can call commit increment total post. Because when we add a new post, we're going to be saying we're incrementing it. Now, I want to go into here. And instead of incrementing it, we're going to say minus one. So we're actually going to take one away from our total posts. So there you go. So that's going to handle that. And then back in here, this is going to set our count. So now if we go back to our app and we refresh, increment total post is not defined. Let's go back. I probably do something wrong. Where is it? Line. We'll find out. Let's figure out. So it's increment total posts, set total posts set total posts that's correct what's it say again it says i really gotta rebind these uh back to here increment total posts increment is not defined oh i i've just noticed what i've done i've basically i writ out increment total posts instead of saying increase total posts minus one someone probably noticed that and i apologize that i missed that that was so obvious my bad let's go back this is what debugging does but now if we refresh you should see the load more button now appears but the load more post does not exist so here you can see it's here let's actually show this as well just quickly in the home view on the button we're just going to say there is um store dot state dot total post so we can just see how many posts there is so there's four total posts which is correct because if we go back to our thing here and click on post you can see there's four now if we add a new one let's say the fifth post the fifth post uh we can update this let's say to me um the fifth post paste oh uh, 
that's that's the com that's the content and we're just going to browse we're going to select this first one again and let's hit publish now that's going to add it to here but you'll also see this now says five so that's working perfectly fine that's updated as well but now let's say we actually remove this fifth post delete delete now you can see it's gone back down to four and it's removed from there so that's all working that's they're, they're all working which is good that's something we want. <laughs> so now what we need to do is we need to obviously load. This button needs to do something. So let's go back to our code and we're going to go to our store and we're going to find, well, we're going to go un in our actions. Let's just break these up as well to make it easier to read. Underneath the remove posts, we're going to say load more posts. Just like that, we're going to get our commit again. And we're going to say the limit is equal to 10. Just by default, it'll be 10. So if we don't pass anything through, it will limit it to 10. We should also do the, um, oh yeah, the fetch limit is equal to no. Maybe we should set it to 10 by default. No, because we, if we don't pass anything, we want to fetch every single post. That would make sense. But this one, loading more posts should be half a limit. That's what we're doing. Um, anyway, so in here, we're going to create a query again. Now I'm going to use back ticks. And I'm going to say star, oh, sorry, star, not that, uh, type is equal to post, right? Because we want to get some posts again. Now, this time, we're also going to obviously get in our author, and we're going to bring him in from the left. We're then going to order them by the created at desk. And then after here, we're going to do so here. So we can actually pass this through so we can say bam dollar and we're gonna say this dot state dot post dot length dot 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 dollar this dot state dot post dot length plus the limit so what's going on here so let me explain so we're gonna look for all the posts and we're gonna we're gonna join all the authors which are to do with this posts so we're going to add the author in for that post. We're then going to order them by descending like we do. And then what we're going to do is we're going to limit them. We're going to get them. We're only going to get the ones which are after the amount of posts we currently have. So if we have six posts, seven posts, eight posts, then this is going to start at uh, seven, eight or whatever we've got. How many posts we've got minus one. Um, and then this dot state dot post dot length plus the limit is going to basically say, okay, and... We're going to get this amount of posts plus the extras. And again, this is exclusive. So this will be plus one, um, which you can't actually see. But obviously, that's what that is. So let's go under here. And let's just say sanity.fetquery posts set posts. And once again, in here, we're going to say the new posts array is going to be dot, 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 this dot state dot posts. Then we're going to say posts. And pass them through just like we did up here basically um, and this time but this time we're going to be adding more posts to it and that should hopefully get us all the posts we currently need so let's hit save and let's try this out so let's go back and back and let's refresh so here if we hit load more you can see it's loaded one more if we load more you can see it's loaded another and now the button has disappeared because we finally have all the posts we need if we refresh obviously we're going to be back down to two so we can remove that show more obviously i know it says four and we only loaded two extra but that's kind of how it works because obviously i'm just showing the total posts i could do total posts minus the post length which would show you the amount left i mean we could let's see what that does so there we got two reload we now have one left and there we go there'd be no left if that was there but there you go you can actually see this is working and we can load more posts so let's move on to actually setting up the actual click so let's just let's bring this back let's just slam that up there and let's open this and also slam that up there also if i haven't mentioned yet the documentation inside of sanity is incredible um it's super easy to get started and there's a lot to it. So if you do want to learn it, I definitely recommend looking, especially the client library's JavaScript, where you can see all the functionality we've used in this video, such as fetch a single document, fetch multiple documents. Well, we, we've used a query. So this one here, fetch, which is the preferred option. Um, 
And there you go. There's a bunch of other things you can do here. Um, and I thought I'd just mention this while I was at it. So anyway, let's get this working. So we want my first post. When we click this, we want to see all the post details here. So let's actually go and add that in. So go back to our home view or back to our code and let's create this new view. So let's close all this for now. Inside of our views, we're going to create a new file. Now we're going to put this in a posts folder so, or post, post or posts, which one makes more sense? Uh, probably the post, right? We'll just say post. Yeah, post because it's singular. And then we're going to say ID few. So basically, the I, we'll do, we're naming this underscore ID few because this is going to be the post by ID. So we're going to find the post by the ID. So let's create a click template here. Um, and let's just create a main tag with the post page. Uh, we're going to have an image on top. So we'll say image here quickly. We're going to have a back button so it can take us back. Um, underneath here, we will then have, let's say, the title. Uh, I'm just writing this out so we know what we're going to be doing. We're going to do in the excerpt. And then we will probably show the content here. So the excerpt obviously is a piece of the content sometimes. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to show a small excerpt and show a nice large amount of content. And then we will show the author details at the bottom. So you can actually see all the author there. So that's what we're going to be doing there. Um, but before that, we need to obviously get the post. So if we go down underneath template, um, we can create a script tag for JavaScript and default. Um, and now we can say setup in here. And before we actually before we write this, let's go to our router quickly and let's set up the route. So we're going to remove the about. We no longer need the about page. What we need instead instead is we're going to say path and we're going to say post forward slash and then we're going to pass this id so if you put a sem or a colon in front of a word inside of the path it will know to use this as it will know to use this as the id so there's a parameter so this can be anything anything you write in here will be passed as a parameter to the post page we set here so in here we're then going to say the name is equal to post and the component is going to be in our views but we're going to have our post forward slash and then we're going to have the underscore id dot view file here so you can name this anything i just do it i name it how i want because obviously i think it looks better and that's a better way to do it in my opinion i'm also just going to quickly fix my tab in my index to take from content uh confer indentations to tabs and then tab using for there we go just looks a bit better for me anyway personally there you go so that's that's all done now We've got this, we're lazy loading this component. I think this is called lazy loading because someone let me know if that's not what you call um, this. I, I read it somewhere and now I've just stuck with it. Um, but anyway, off topic, let's now go and try it. Well, firstly, if we go back here and we refresh, we should see no more weird warning. Okay, so we're seeing the author warnings, which is fine because that's this route, but these no longer have an author warning or page warning. When we go to it, it just says there's no author again because we've got the author part, but this, it's working you can see it says post forward slash this now if we want to i want to show you something quickly so inside of our post id in here let's just quickly say route dot params dot id and there you go you can see whatever is in here actually turns up inside here so let's say we try something else let's say we say um juice just because i don't know i want some juice i'm thirsty there you go so juice will appear anything you write after the post forward slash will now turn into this and that's what the parameters does with the um that's what this does here basically um it's smart enough to know that that is a parameter so let's remove this um and let's actually get in our setup here so before our set we're going to import a few things we're going to import we need our on mounted lifecycle method and we also need a reference uh, from view. Then after that, we're going to have import use route. So we're going to get the route, which will allow us to get the um, the route. Use route allows us to get the route, which is the same as inside of here going dollar route, basically. Well, like I did a minute ago to get our parameters. That's what I'm trying to say. And then we're going to import sanity because we're going to be using our sanity client. So we're going to say from dot dot slash dot dot slash 
client because obviously it's two behind it um, and the same with this so we're going to say import and we're going to say create url from util well that doesn't need that from dot 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 utils and i don't know why that came from but it's gone now and there you go so now inside of seb we're going to do a few things we need to get the route first so we're going to say route is equal to use route oh then we're going to get the uh, parameters, so the ID. So we're going to say ID is equal to route.params.id. Uh, and we're going to put this in a ref. Just so we have it, this is now a um, thing. So if we ever change this, it will change as well. We can then say const the post is equal to a reference of null because we don't currently have it. And that's why we need our lifecycle method. So once this is mounted, this component, we can say we can do an arrow function in here and i'm just going to do a query so i'm going to say const let me just move that sidebar uh, const query is equal to and i can pass through this now i'm going to show you how to do the proper way of writing this and we're going to say dollar star underscore type is equal to post because we're searching for a new post we can say and and the id is equal to and we're going to say dollar sign id now we normally obviously in the previous pages i have been doing the uh i wouldn't say the cheating way but the easy way let's say in our store here the easy way of um adding in variables such as the id like this here and i've just used template uh template strings to basically um use this to pull it inside of it uh, temporary literals to put this inside and now it's not actually the correct way you shouldn't do this so i'm going to show you a way now that you can do it i just i did it like this so i could show you how you can do it but now i want to show you the proper way to do it and that's by using a dollar sign and then a variable name such as id so we're going to then pass through oh inside of this we're going to close that off and then we're going to say zero because this is an array essentially this here is saying get all the posts that have the same ID. And we just want the first one because we're only looking for the one with the ID. So it's gonna be the first one. And that's why we say zero. We also then wanna say dot, 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 author, like that to get the author as well. Like we do in every other query we've done to get the user, we just wanna be able to pull back the author. Now I'm gonna say const param. So this is what I'm on about here. So we say const, the parameters we're passing through to this, is going to be id just like that and that will then just show our id well actually that's false we need to say id.value because this is a ref we could also just pull this out and you know set it to that and then we wouldn't have to do the value part but you know i like to stick to the the few rules the rules that few have laid out for us although they might not be as efficient as they can be which they fixed in later versions so we can hopefully fix it later versions to say so to use the parameters we need to pass them alongside our fetch so we're going to say fetch query and then we're going to say params and that's where that's how it knows to bind this id to this dollar sign id here we can then say dot then, then not dot fetch, and we can get the data. Now, the data, let's just log the data for now so we can see it here. Although, we're probably going to want to say post.value is equal to data as well. So, let's have a look what we get in this. So, let's go back, back here, and if we refresh, you can see that's null. Now, the reason that is null is because we this doesn't exist this this id does not exist and also we have an error here let's just quickly comment out create url we're going to use that in a moment um although i could fix that by just saying return and i can say post and create url and that should hopefully fix it it might still throw an error we'll find out there you go cool so that's null so if we go back home and we actually select one of our posts let's say the third post you can see that this time we no longer get null and instead we get all the information of our author our image, our excerpt, our content, and all of that along with this, which is great. That means we've got everything we need here. So let's go back to our code here. We can delete this console log, it's not needed. And up inside of our page, we can start building the actual page. So in here, we're gonna create a, I'm actually gonna wrap this in a section. So doing all this was kind of pointless. Close that. Um, and in here, I'm gonna say, section.container.mxauto.p4 just like we've done on the other pages 
Uh, we could make this like some sort of layout if we wanted to, but we're, we're not going to here. It, it, this is simple enough. And also, I want to say here, fee if post. We want to make sure the post exists before we render this section. Otherwise, we're just going to see it. We could also do a section fee else, which just says here, let's just say a paragraph with text y dot italic. And this will just say loading dot dot dot. And we can make this a bit bigger. Let's say text to Excel. Um, and now if we go back here and we refresh, we should see loading to start with. But for some reason, oh, you do at the top, it loads for a few seconds and then it actually loads. So that's fine. Let's get this in here. So we're going to get the image. Now the image is just going to be another image. We're going to bind the source like we did before. And we're going to say create URL. Now we're going to say post dot image. And this time we're going to set the width to 1280 by 300 because we want it to be tall and long. Let's remove this alt tag and let's give it a class of width full and margin bomb A or MB8. So let's have a look if that's worked. There you go. You can see that's worked across the top. And if we bring this down to a mobile view, you can see it works. For now, let's put this to the side, attach that and let's bring this right up like that. So now you can see this we can see what happens as we write it which should be easier for you guys i don't know why i didn't do that from the start you know we come up with better ways to code as we go along that's how us developers work we debug as we code let's also bring that back uh, so we're going to create a click event on this button which is just going to say router dot back and that's all we need to write in here for it to know to go back to the correct page but we want to give this some classes so i'm going to give this a class called flex items and we're going to say center. We're then going to, so item center, because we want to align and we're going to have an icon in here. So we're going to say text LG, text green, 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 500. We're then going to say hover. When you hover over it, it's going to be text green and maybe 600, so just slightly darker. Duration of 300. And we're going to have an MB of four, so margin bottom four there. And now inside of here, we're going to create a span with the class of material icon. So if you remember earlier, we've used this before. So we're going to say materials icons, text LG and margin right one. And this is going to be the keyboard underscore double underscore arrow underscore left. And then to the right of this, we're going to say back. So let's just have a look what I like save and there you go you can see the icon showing here and if we hit back it actually takes us back and works so if we go to the fourth post now you can see it says loading and there you go but it's actually loaded the fourth page back to the thirds and this time it's a bit quicker because I think it caches the results which is pretty cool um, and there you go you can see how quick this is as well so that's the back button done let's do the title so h1 and we're just going to say post or not not that, post.title, hit save, and there's our second post title. After we've done the post, well, actually, obviously, that's not right. We need to style this. I was about to just skip the styling of this. Uh, we're just going to say about 3XL, that might be the right size. Yep, that's perfect. So 3XL, MD text 5XL to make it even bigger on bigger screens. Um, and then we're going to say margin bottom, oh, margin bottom 8 uh, just like that because we're going to push down the X uh, a little. The X is actually going to be a paragraph with text grey 500 um, italic and margin bottom 8. Now in here we're just going to say post.excert like that and there you go. My second post is better than it was before. Now for the content, now this is where we're going to need something else. This isn't actually going to work as we want it to. We're going to want to confirm. We could do what it's showing here, markdown, HTML, but that's not going to work as we want it to. Now let me show you something we can do. So let me show you here. We're going to say diff and we're just going to say fee HTML. Actually, no, let's do this as a paragraph tag. I think a paragraph tag makes sense. It can still be one paragraph. And we're going to say again, we're going to say fee HTML is equal to post dot content save and there you go you can see all the content is here but the issue is it's one big block of content it's not respecting the line breaks in between now few will do its best to you know use html to do that and sanity will also pass you back the correct stuff as well so if we go to our bit here oh we didn't actually show it basically it's passing you back blank spaces slash ends um 
and I'm just I'm clicking all the wrong buttons now let's just right click inspect and now hopefully we can actually see this in here you can see it's not showing it it's just showing it as one big block and that's because it's not respecting the spacing we set inside of our sanity so to fix that we're going to wrap this in a utility function so if we go back to our utilities function we're going to create an export text to html and we're going to call this oh sorry text not date and inside of here i'm going to show you how we can actually style this to look right so we're going to say return and we're going to use regex for this. so i'm going to say text dot replace and we're going to say forward slash backslash n forward slash g for global tag or flag and we're going to replace it with this break tag right here and also this needs to be double break because for some reason it's throwing it's throwing an error anyway and why is that oh we forgot the const export const text html and there we go so that should now work so what basically sanity uh styles it or uses these back the universal sort of backslash n um value to say there's a line break here it's for a new line the new line tag here and what we're going to do is we're going to use regex to find these new lines and actually break them so if we hit save we can go back to uh, our id here and we can say alongside create url we're going to say text to html which we're going to pass through our return and then in here we can just say text to html and wrap it in that and save and there you go you can see it's now styled the properties properly now there might be some more things you wish to do with this you might say oh but i wanted something to be a title i wanted something to be something else so we could actually change this to be a diff um, and we can actually just set these as what they you think they should be um, but for now i think this works like you could also search for things wrapped inside of a star like markdown style um, but for now i think this works so we're going to leave that like that and there you go you can see that works so now we're going to get the author details now the author details is slightly different to what we've done so far um because we're going to actually get the author so i said this is going to be different to what we've done so far so it's going to be this i meant it's going to be the same as what we did in our um home page so where we show the author's name and that here um so you can see here the tyler parts here that's what we're going to do at the bottom of this as well basically so let's go back to read more the fourth post we can scroll down and at the bottom here we're just going to say we're going to do a diff with the class of flex items center and the margin bottom of four although the margin bottom doesn't really matter too much because there's nothing actually below it we just want to add some spacing below in case you know the content's really big and we want a bit more spacing so under here we're going to have an image now the image again is going to be bound here and we're going to say create url and we're going to say post dot author dot avatar we're going to pass through about 300 300 although that might be a bit too big we can resize that later on once we've styled it um and then we can give this the class let's break this down so it's easier to read and this is going to have the class of inline block because we want it to sit next to something rounded full and also width of 10 or 12 and height of 12 as well uh, and then we're gonna have a margin right of four like that so let's hit save and there you go you can see that's showing there also i've just realized we we've actually gone margin bottom uh four there let's uh, no let's do it up here so in our paragraph tag let's style this we're gonna say text lg to make it a bit bigger and mb8 for that as well so there you go so now the text looks bigger it looks better and this has some spacing below it so underneath our image we're going to say h1 and inside of here we're going to pass through our post dot author dot full dot full underscore name now that's showing there but let's style this up so let's give this a class and we're just going to say text gray 500 text lg there you go so that's looking a lot better and that's ready to see so you can see here this is the post we can come in here we can select the post 
Um, we can actually load more. So let's load more posts now and you can see the second post remastered. Hit read more and there you go. You can see this is working really nice and it's also, once again, it's also responsive. So you can see it changing as we resize the screen there, which is really nice. Um, so let's now move on to the next bit, which is going to be setting up the authors here. We have the authors to do next so we can actually fit it in author and see all the posts per author. So let's go and create our authors page. Let's close this, close this, and close this. Now, minimize all these for now. Let's let's start from the beginning here, start from the top. The first thing we're gonna to have to actually do is change this, repurpose this about page to be the authors view. So we're gonna say authors view, author view. Author view sounds about right, that's fine. We'll stick with author view. Um, we're gonna come in here, just delete all of this for the moment, time being. Uh, we're also going to need, well, let's actually add a bit in here. So let's create a main with the authors.page. Um, there you go. And then inside of here, we can have another section which will have the container, MX Auto, and padding four for this. We probably could have even created a class for this. Um, and there you go. Now, inside of here, we will have a H1 with the text of 2XL. We're gonna have an MB8 to push it down and we're just gonna say authors inside of here. Hit save and there you go. We're gonna leave that at that for now. We'll come back to this file in a second. Firstly, we actually wanna get this working. So when we click on authors, it currently does nothing. So if we go into the router, into our index, we need to create a new path. And I'm gonna do this above the post ID because I feel like this is where it belongs. So we're gonna say path forward slash and I'm gonna say authors. Now, underneath authors, I'm going to call, obviously, the name is also going to be authors. And finally, the component is going to be author. We called it author few. Let's author or authors. Which one sounds better? Auth I feel like we're going to have a single author as well. So let's call this authors. It, it makes sense. There you go. Save. And now you can see this page has finally rendered and it's looking good. If we now also open up this you can see we no longer get any errors in our console, even when we're at home, we don't get any errors telling us this page just do not exist. You may also notice when you swap page, this menu bar does not disappear and that can be quite pretty annoying to be fair. So I'm gonna quickly show you how you can actually get rid off this menu bar every time you change it. Um, Cause I don't wanna be on it, you probably don't wanna be on it. And that's probably the best way to go about it. So <laughs> underneath, so over here on the right, underneath this, where we define the router, we're gonna say router dot after each. So after we actually transition to a new page, we're gonna use an arrow function and we're gonna say if the from dot name. So if we're actually going to a page, we're not just reloading the page. We're going to say document dot document element dot scroll top. So what we're saying here is we want to get the document element and we're going to get the scroll top and we're going to set it to zero because we want to bring this to the top of the page because if we're not, if we're halfway down and we go to a page, it might it might not always take us to the top. So we're going to now here say store dot dispatch and I'm going to create I'm going to create a close menu or you know what tog we're going to create a close menu action. So let's go into our store and scroll down. So you remember we have this toggle menu. We're going to add a close menu. Now, the reason I'm not using toggle menu for this is because we set something up in the in the actual um, mutation, sorry, earlier. Now, we're going to say commit toggle menu and we're going to pass through close. So if you remember, we actually had the close function here. So instead of adding in the functionality here, we're gonna do it here just so I can show you how that works as well. So now if I go to home, you can see this menu bar will also close depending on what page you go. Now if this is open and we refresh the page, it's also closed and it will not open, which is really nice. And that's where you can see it's now changing. So back to router and that's it. That's all we need to do to get that to close. I just want to show you that because it was really annoying. Um, and there you go, now it's no longer annoying anymore. So let's just close the router um, and we're still gonna need this open and this. So we've got our author, right? We've got our author page. What do we need to do next? We need to now get all of the authors because we currently don't have that. The only place we have authors 
is inside of our posts because we obviously bind the author to the post so we can get that information through. But we need an actual authors array so we know exactly how many authors we have and we can list them out and find out what posts they have as well. So under here, we're going to create a script tag, which is going to be JavaScript. We're then going to basically pass through, we're going to basically get a setup. Um, and we're going to need we're going to need to get the store. So we're going to import the store. So we're going to say in here, I'm going to import a few things. I'm going to import uh, unmounted and also computed. And that's going to be from few. I'm then going to import use, oh, not yours, use store from few x. Now I know that this is wrong here. That should be import, not import. Um, and there we go. Um, and we're going to also get an author card, which we create later on. So let's go down here. And yes, I know these aren't being used. I'm about to use them. We're going to say const store is equal to use store. We're going to say const authors is equal to computed. And we're going to do this in one line to make it a bit cleaner. And we're just going to say store.getters.authors. We're going to use another getter to get the authors. And then finally, we're just going to say unmounted. Basically this, except from it, it's going to be a capital F because that's how I like to name things. It's going to be unmounted. We're going to use the store to dispatch and we're going to get that. We're then going to return the authors as well to this. So there you go. You can see no more errors. We just need to go and um, set up the fetch authors uh, action. So inside of these actions, let's go to the bottom. And we're going to say fetch authors. And this is where we're going to create our query. So what we need is, we do need this query. It's const query is equal to, and once again, we're going to say star type is equal to author. Because that's what we set up in the schema. Um, and that's what we wanted there. So fetch authors. But we also want to order the authors as well. Um, I think we're going to order them by name. You don't have to order them. You can have them random or however they were created. But I like to order them by their names. So we're going to say full name. Um, and that way that will actually order them. And we can say ascending like that. But I think by default it's already ascending. You only need to pass through that if you're descending. So once we've done that, we can say sanity.fetch. And we can pass through our query. Let's also close this off because it's, it's, it's rather annoying. Uh, fetch our query and then we're going to get our authors back so down here we can say commit set authors and we can pass through our authors here so if we scroll back up to our mutations we can now quickly create a set authors where we say state.authors is equal to authors if we open up the console and we go back to our uh, in here we could do it in here and we say here let's just log our authors you can actually see the authors now this is only going to be me but we're going to create some more authors so you can see here we get an array of just me but let, let's create some more authors I've got some people we can add in let's remove that well let's keep the console log because we're going to need to see this so let's go back to sanity so I'm going to open this up and open up sanity here and in our author, there's just poor old me. It's me on my own doing all this work. So let's let's get some workers in. Um, and the full name for this one is going to be Aaron. We're going to have Mr. A.A. Ron Fisher. He's actually a colleague of mine at work. Just shout out to him. Um, and we're going to have him here. His short bio is likes to make race car noises. And what else do you do? Likes to make car, car race car noises and eat plain bread. That's his thing, he loves it. He loves eating plain bread. So that's what his short bio is gonna be about. Now we're gonna upload a photo and I've actually gone and snagged one of his old photos from the internet. This is Aaron in disguise because Twitter banned one of his accounts. Just some backstory here. We're giving, we, he's getting a backstory with some lore for this tutorial. Um, and here you go, you can see Aaron here taking a picture with his mustache on because he, 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 was, he was undercover. Now we can publish this and if we go back to our, uh, this, this is what I want, and we refresh, you can see we should, uh, we need to get a bit more than that. 
Give me two. There we go. Two in our array. And we get me and Aaron. And as you can see, Aaron is first, although he was created after because his full name is AA for AA wrong. Um, so yeah, there we go. So we're getting Aaron there. And let's create one more person just for the, the purpose of the demo. Let's create a, did I, oh, I didn't click it. Um, and this one is going to be a shout out to my brother-in-law. We're going to use this gamer tag of Dixie and plays video games and loves. No, you know what? Com he doesn't play them. He just complains about video games as he plays. So he'll complain about video games. He loves games, by the way. And he's really good at them. Shout out to him. But... He, you know, he'll he'll complain about them because he loves to complain, but he'll never build one. That's that's Liam. Um, anyway, and this is him. This is his logo here. It's something I made him a long time ago for a fun when he was doing some Twitch stuff. And there you go. That's his little little Eggman there. So there he goes. Let's publish him as well. Now we've got three new users. So I'm going to do so here. We're going to go to our posts and we're going to give everyone their own post. So mine's going to be the first awesome post. Aaron is going to have the second post. So in here, we're just going to select this and click replace. And we're going to search for Mr. AA on there. There you go. So now we're going to publish that. And that should update. If we go back to the front end as well. And we go, oh, it wasn't already on it. I was going to show you that. It should now show Aaron's logo, although it's cached. So we're going to reload this and go down. And there you go. We've got Aaron in there, um, which is awesome. Now let's go and get Dixie's one in there. Um, so in the third post, we're going to just replace this and we're going to say Dixie, hit publish. And there you go. That should now be updated. Let's go back here and we should see, you can see there, it's already automatically updated Dixie's image here for that poster, which looks really good. So there you go. That's now all set up and ready to go. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's good. So now let's go back to our authors page. So we're getting our authors here. Let's just shift refresh to actually get them. And there you go. We've got our authors here. We need to obviously use them. So let's go back to here. Let's remove this. And we need to create a getter because inside of our auth, we're using a getter because getters are better for getting things from the uh, state that you're not going to change. So underneath, oh, no, not in there. Underneath, yeah, underneath our posts, we're going to have authors. And we're going to get our authors. And we're not going to sort our authors for this. But we could sort them if we wanted to. We could have an author's descending list and also an ascending list. Um, we're just going to leave it like that for now because I think that works. Um, so let's get our authors. And that should now be set there. So now we have authors. So how are we going to display our authors? Well, we're going to want to basically loop through a bunch of authors in, here, in a grid. So here we're just going to say a grid. And we're going to have this as a grid calls free but only after the medium screen size otherwise they're going to be in a list so that makes it more mobile responsive and we're going to give them a gap of four or oh, capital a capital gap just a lowercase gap please um, and that way they've got a bit of spacing between them there now in here we're going to create we're going to get an author card so like we created the postcard we're going to create a new component uh, a new file and we're going to call it author card dot for you and we're going to basically work in here now. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a template in HTML. It's going to be a diff with the background of gray 800, um, rounded LG, padding 4, and we're going to center the text. Just like that. Hit that down below. Shut this sidebar so we can actually see more of this. And let's create the image. So we're going to have an image. We're going to use the create URL. And we're going to get an author from our, we're going to pass down an author to these components. So this is going to be author.avatar. We're going to have a class on this, which just says, um, let's go along with the lines of inline block, because they're going to be next to sync. Rounded um, full, because we want it to be fully rounded, like it is around the rest of the site. 32, which is 128 pixels, a height of 32, and an MB of 4. That's not MB, that's nothing. So give it a margin bar of four. Let's break these down to make it a bit more re easier to read. And there you go. Now underneath the image, we're going to have a H3, which is going to be the user's name. So we're going to give this a class of text 
Three XL. We want it to be big. We want it to be in people's faces. You know, we'll say two XL. I think three might be too big. Uh, we'll go font bold, not two in people's faces. And a margin bottom of four again. And this place, we're going to say author dot full underscore name. Hit save. And there we go. So that is set there. We're then going to say paragraph tag dot text gray 400 dot mb4 and i'm going to say author dot short underscore bio which is what we've set that so if we save obviously none of this exists and so no one's going to actually appear here um and finally we're just going to have a router hyphen link no, that's a router link router hyphen link um which just says uh, profile and that's where how we're going to fit it their profile so we're going to set this as a two and in the two we're just going to say forward slash or we're going to use template literals we're going to say forward slash author forward slash and then we're going to pass the author dot underscore id and we're going to give this a class of button so that should work a bit better break that down so it's easy readable um and now under here, we're going to obviously have to get this. So in JavaScript, we're going to say props author. And then we're going to get a setup where we're going to return our create URL, which we're going to import <laughs> from our utilities. In here, we're going to say create URL from dot dot slash dot dot slash utils. And that should now work. So now we need to obviously use the, we need to import this author card. Oh, no, we did part, we do pass a prop of author. Now, actually, once again, we're gonna use a bit of a stronger author here. We wanna make sure we've got some things. So we're gonna say author, we give it a type of object again, and it needs to be required. Just so we have some validation in our props for anything that obviously someone might, so, so people can't make mistakes. Or not make mistakes as easy, should I say? Because obviously, people are still going to make mistakes, especially if you let a uh, client choose your stuff. And anyway, so we're going to have an author card in here, but we need to import it. So let's just say import author card from dot slash components forward slash author card, just like that. Pass it into our return, sorry, into a components options API field author card and then we need to just say b4 and we can pass through our grid now you see we're getting some errors here and i've just realized we should actually put a fee if on this so we want to say fee if the author exists fee if author fee if author basically and i think this should be in a diff in inside of this which then has all of this inside. Save, and then let's have a look at the error. So can't resolve components, author card. Did I do that wrong? Author card from components, where are we? We are, we actually need to do dot, dot, slash to go back one, and that should now be there. So now in author card, can't find utilities. Okay, that's fine. Back to author card, and I've gone back too many. It should just be dot, dot, slash utils. And then one more error, v4 is invalid. That's because we're halfway through that part because you rudely interrupted us. Um, so in here, we're gonna say, we're gonna pass through author and I. In, and I'm gonna say authors just like that. After here, we're gonna say key is equal to I. And then obviously we're gonna pass through an author, which should be our author here. Hit save. And there you go. You can see our authors are now all making their appearances on screen. You've got Aaron, Dixie and myself at the bottom here. And if we click profile, we're going to have a little error because this doesn't, this route does not exist yet, but we're going to create this in a moment. So let's just close this. And there you go. You can see here we have Aaron, Dixie and myself. So now we just need to create our actual profiles for this. Okay, so let's create this profile page. So to do so, what we're gonna do is, we are gonna now get the authors and we're going to be able to create a profile for them. So 
Let's close the or for few. We do not need it anymore. And we don't even need this index. All we need is the router.js right now. And inside of here, we're going to create a new path, which is going to be forward slash author, forward slash ID. And that's going to be our singular author. We're then going to call this author. And the component is going to be fuse author ID underscore, just like that. Same as how we have the post. And yes, we'll get in an error because we do not have that created. So in our fuse, let's create a new file. And in here, I'm just going to say author forward slash. And I'm just going to say, what did I call it? underscore id dot view bam see i act like i know what i'm doing and then i forget why i was going to name things after five seconds after telling you guys so it's fine we're, we're all human um so we're going to create a template in here and what we want to do is we want to say main um and just like the others we're going to call this well we can call this author dot page uh, or hyphen page not dot page and there you go so that's set there inside the main we're going to have a section like we do and the section is going to have a fee if. So we're going to have an if statement on it saying author. We're then going to have a class that says container uh, MX auto and M or P4 for the padding of four. Let's close this sidebar so we can actually see this. So inside of here, we have our author. We got this. We can also, again, do another section. Um, and let's also give it this class. I didn't actually do that for the last one. I should have. Um, and this is just going to be an else and this is just going to have a paragraph with the text of, was it LG or 2XL? I think it was LG. Uh, and text white. And this is just going to say loading. So if that isn't there, then it's just going to show a loading screen for now, which is nice. If we click Aaron, you can see it just says loading. And it's always going to say loading for now. Uh, so let's go back to authors. Let's select me. And it still says loading. But you can see this is working. We're now on the right page. Um, which is good and again if we just do next to here we could just say uh, route.params.id just like that so you can see that that is working as well and the parameter is being pulled through um, hit save and there you go so that's all set let's go get our author so underneath um, our template we're going to create a script and we're going to call it javascript <laughs> no we're just going to set the script up underneath we're going to import an on mounted like we did before and we're also going to have a ref both of them going to be from Vue.js. we're going to then import use root from Vue router and we're going to import our sanity client uh from and we are currently in two things we're in one deep two deep and then we're going to say client just like that underneath we're going to import our not use sanity but that would be a cool concept and we're going to say create url that needs to be a capital c uh from dot dot slash that slash slash dot uh, slash slash dot 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 slash utils just like that and here we go we can now say import postcard from because remember earlier we created a postcard and that's what we're going to get through so we can actually display the user's posts and we're going to say forward slash postcard just like this and they're all defined but they're never used i know i know i apologize now we're going to return our author and our create create url here oh this isn't in the set sorry this needs to be in a setup which we then I've just deleted it. It's fine. We'll just redo it again. We'll just say return and we're going to say our author and also our create URL. Just like that. That's fine. Um, and then above here, we're going to have components, which we pass through and we're going to pass through our postcard. Uh, I did not need you. Thank you very much. Um, there's a few things, obviously, which we still need to use. So let's go into our setup here. And above the return statement, let's let's start off with the offers, which is getting the root, which is equal to use root. We're then going to get the ID, um, which is going to be equal to a reference, which we're going to say route.params.id. We're then going to get the author, which is also going to be a reference to null. Under this, we can say on mounted. So once this is mounted, we're going to basically say we're going to make a query using Sanity's querying language. Again, super powerful tool. And we're going to say star type is equal to author. 
and if the ID equals dollar sign ID, and then we want to get number zero, because again, this goes pass back an array and not just a singular post. We can then pass back this, and we're going to say dot, 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 because we want to get everything from it. We then want to say we also want to get our post. Now, this is going to be more of a complex query. Let me just delete this here. There we go. So in here, we're going to do a bit more of complex query. So for now, I'm going to put this in template literals, and I'm going to break it down so I can actually show you what I'm doing here. So this is now going to be inside of quotes, and I'm going to say posts. Now this is then going to say, so this is basically going to then start querying something else. It's going to say, we're also going to get the posts, and this is going to have its own query. So we're going to query, right? This is how powerful this sanity language is, this uh, graph, graph, QL, relational, OQ, Grok, I remember, I remember part of it. The naming things is hard, okay? So we've got this author here, we've got the ID and it's in here. So we're going to get the posts and we're just going to say, we're going to be star, just like we've done before. We're going to create another query inside of a query. We're going to say underscore type is equal to post. And we're going to make sure the author has the ID, sorry, underscore ID, equal to the ID we pass through. We're then going to say dot, 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 and pass through. Actually, we're not going to do dot, dot, dot. Instead, we're just going to get the ID. We're going to say we want the ID, the title, the excerpt, and image. We also want to get the created at... And we want to get the author again. I know we're getting the author from the top level, but we also need to pass the author through in this post author to go back to our loop. It's a bit, it's a bit, you know, long-winded to again get the author again, but this works. Now don't be afraid of this massive query. Let's break it down a bit more. So you can see here, we've got this, we've got that. We're getting the post, which then has all of this. And then if we break this down again quickly, you can see we're just querying again. We're just making sure the author ID is equal to type post. And then we're saying we only want these values. So we only want to get the ID. We only want to get title. We only want to get the excerpt. We only want to get the image. And we only want to get created at. So obviously before we were getting everything. So when we do something like this, we're asking for everything. If we want to limit this, we could then pass through these strings behind it. And here we're asking for everything. The three dots is the way of saying we want everything. And we also want them to link in the posts. And that's what's happening here. So then we're going to get our author, which we're then going to pass through again. Oh, I just did the wrong thing. We want to get the author, which is just going to have the full name and the avatar pass through. So we're not going to get everything from the author here. So just to make this look a bit better once more, again, we're going to have to break this back down into one line. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I just want it to be easily fishable from here of what's going on and this is what's happening so we're saying i don't know where this extra things come from is there one which we're missing i don't think it's needed let's remove that and pretend it's not supposed to be there um so we have to oh we're also missing one more of those there you go so that's what we're missing we're missing one of those and not the square brackets um so let's break this back down so we've got we've got the three dots which means get everything from the author Add in the posts, query the posts, because this is the query we want to run. We want to make sure the posts are only, we want to get all the posts that have the author ID of the ID we pass through. We then want to say we only want to get the ID, title, excerpt, image, and created out of that post. So again, break this onto that line, just like this. Just bring it all back, just so it's easier to see again. And then let's break this on there. And finally, that back on its own line. And this will also need to go on its own line. Back or back on the same line. Anyway, that's one query. Now, this is quite a huge query. Um, and you could probably break this down. But this just shows how powerful it is that you can write out these huge queries and have it work. You could probably break it down and it would still work. I just, I prefer just to have it in one line. And we're going to say params is equal to, again, we're going to have id, which is equal to id.value. Um, because obviously we want to get our author's ID there. We're then going to say sanity.fetch and we're going to fetch a query and some params. 
We're then going to say dot then author, and we're going to say um, author dot value. Or sorry, we're going to say this is data, not author. Author dot value is equal to data. So let's just log this data as well, so we know what we're getting, and I can actually show you what we've brought through. So we're just missing the post park paint. The postcard is the only thing that's being used and not thing. So let's just let's just close this off, close off, and hit save so we can see. Now let's open F12, bring this up. Uh, let's refresh because I think there are errors from before, and you can see we're getting null currently. Is that because this is wrong? I don't know. Something's gone wrong here. So let's figure out what that is. Okay, guys, I think I found the issue here. So in our query, you can see here we did ID. This needs to be underscore ID. Hit save, refresh, and there you go. We actually get our element here. So I'm just going to full screen this. I'm going to make this a bit bigger, and I'm going to show you what's in here. So we get the avatar, which is, again, just an asset, which we're going to use. We're going to need to use our create URL, um, which we created in our utilities to obviously transform that. We then got our full name. We've got our short bio, created at, ID, ref, and type. So we've got all the elements we need. But we also have this posts array, which is new, which is what we use that um, that join method in here. So we've gone in here and said, join in these posts from, and then run this query. And that's where we've got these from. So you can see here, they've only got author, excerpt, image, title, created at, and ID. That's all they've brought through. They haven't brought the ref or anything else like that. So you can see here we have everything we need in here. It also has an author with minimal stuff as well, an avatar and just the full name because that's all we need in here to be able to say, okay, we're passing this through to a postcard. So now we have all this information, let's bring this down and let's just bring this to the side again. That's not where we want it. There, there we go. Bring it to the side again. And we need to go up here and we need to start obviously laying out our author because we now have our author. It's here, it's status in there, hit save. Now we rerun, I've just noticed that our author doesn't actually do anything here. You can see here we're saying if we have the author, it's not actually changing there, which is should actually change. But for now, let's go in here and start adding stuff in. Let's say inside of here, we're going to have a diff with the class of flex, item center, and also MB4. And then inside of here, we can have a... I've also just noticed why that's not working. You can see here, we need to say fee else. And there you go, that's working. So there's another little mistake in there, it need to be fee else and not that. So back in our flex, we're just gonna say image, and we're gonna bind our source again. Um, and this one is gonna use the create URL to take the author.avatar and create an actual logo out of that, or an image out of that. Let's break this down. And after here, we can also say class. And in the classes for this, we're gonna have inline block. We're gonna say rounded full. We're gonna say W16, so it's 64 pixels wide and same with the height. And we're gonna make an M margin right of four. Now next to this, we're gonna have a H1. This is gonna have the author dot full underscore name. And this will have the classes of uh, text gray, text gray 500, text 2XL, and uppercase. We're also going to make the font bold as well. Hit save, and there you go. You can see we get this post. It says, okay, this is my page. It's Tyler. Um, and then under the flex box, we're going to add in a paragraph. Now, this is going to have the class of text gray 500 and mb8 and we're going to pass through the author dot short underscore bio and there you go you can see my bio is now underneath and finally we're going to get all our posts and display them on screen so i'm going to say grid dot gap four now in here i'm going to pass through the postcard which we have to uncomment from here because it needs to be used and in the postcard, we're going to say fee for author.posts, or sorry, we're going to say we want the post i in author.posts. We're going to pass through a key, which is going to be i, and then we're going to pass through our post, 
which is going to be post. Hit save, and there you go. You can see we get our cards there. If we stretch this out, you can see we get these nice long cards like we do on the home page here, um, which is really nice. So there you go. So let's bring this back in. Um, and let's go to Aaron. You can see we get his one post. If we go back again to Orphus, we can go to Dixie and get his one post. We go to read more. And once that's loaded, if we hit back, you can see we go back to the Orphus page and not back to the original post page or the home feed. And if we go down here, we can go to my profile as well. And you can see here, I have two posts just like that. And that's how it currently works. Let's just break this down just to make it look a bit neater. And there we go. So that's now set. Okay, guys, let's just demo this little app here, what we've got so far. So let's just refresh and let's hit load more. And you can see we get the second post remastered for Aaron Fisher there. And if we hit load more again, you can see we get my first awesome post, um, which shows up here. We can then go, let's say, to your fourth post, click on this, and you can actually read the post. You can see it here. It looks pretty good. We can go back. And then let's say we go to the authors page. You can also see this menu in working here with the hover effects and the page selected effects. And in here you can see we've got Aaron Fisher, Dixie and myself's post. So let's go to Aaron's posts and you can see here, you can see his post here. We can hit read more, be like, okay, there's a cool post. Let's go back um, and let's go back to home. Now let's just look at the quickly at the real time features one last time for this. So we're gonna snap this to the side. We're gonna get Obviously, we'll snap this to the side and we're going to grab this. Um, now, if we go into, po oh, actually, I also want to grab, where's that other one? This one. I want to also snap this to the bottom and that up to the top. Now, I'm going to show you why in a minute. So, you can see here, this tells me I'm currently editing the third post document, which is right here. So, let me click into this one as well and let's edit it. So, if I'm in here, I can go post, add a few exclamation marks and down at the bottom here, you can see how real time sanity is because this has already updated before i've even hit publish it's updating so if anyone if you're editing a post with multiple people or editing stuff with multiple team members um you will be able to um do that without worrying about overwriting someone else's post because if i'm in here and i'm like yes you can see right then it's gone yes so i know you're editing this and it also tells you when someone is editing it as well which really helps with the real-time thing the real-time features and if we hit publish you can see it's published at the bottom and here and it's automatically updated to three things here now let's make this about a bit more cooler my third post is awesome um my third post awesome let's update that and you can see it's already updated really quickly on there we've also got custom schemas in here so you can create as many of these as you want you can have a bunch of different custom schemas to be able to make your application absolutely huge anything with structured content anything you need um, a cms for to be able to edit the content regularly without having to go into the code and changing it sanity can do that for you there's a lot of other use cases for sanity and even some ones which you might not think of which i can come up with so if you want to see more on sanity obviously do let me know in the comments down below because it's something i wouldn't mind doing it again okay guys that concludes this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got a lot of information out of it and i hope that i explained things well if i didn't guys then just give me a message drop me on discord hop in discord head in the help chat and say hey with your latest video the sanity with you one please can you explain x y and z or just drop me a comment in the video and just say hey if you've got a quick short question about something or you just want to know anything about sanity drop it in the comments below and i'll try and answer as best i can now i just want to give sanity another shout out for giving us the free booster tier so if you've come to the end of this video and you're about to start building all your stuff you probably should have done it while we were building it because you know building along is really fun but if you didn't and you're going to start now don't forget to check out in the description the sanity link they gave us it's like sanity.io forward slash tyler pots or something like that it's in the description go check it out and it is absolutely awesome because they give us a free boosted tier which means you get double double two times that's two times the amount off monthly useless usage and i haven't even come close to using it i think i'm on 10 percent, so i haven't even got to my first set they've been super generous with it and it's absolutely awesome i want to give a shout out to sanity developers for helping me out with this tutorial it's been really awesome and it's super helpful and i hope it explains everything you guys need it too so without further ado guys don't forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button leave a comment down below if you have any questions or anything like that and 
don't forget to join our Discord server. The link is also down below. The Discord allows you, me, everyone else to communicate. You can ask questions if there's a if there's a but there's a channel, a specific channels for asking questions. If you're stuck on a video, there's specific things. There's a bunch of different specifics in there which will help you out. And everyone in there is friendly. No one bites uh, except from our bots who sometimes get in the middle of conversations to tell us we leveled up. How rude, right? But anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching it. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Okay.